Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new OS Plays. We are doing some Breath of the Wild. Uh, Ew. dog percent. We're gonna Dogs. pet all them, them good boys all around Hyrule. We have assembled, uh, we've reassembled the Dragon Rush crew. So we've got yeah. blue, we've got red. Say hi. Hey we've got cyan. It me. And we've got indigo. What up? What's cracking, big smacking? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Turf has Not been like thoroughly stepped on. Yeah, all right, so let me, uh, let me just do a little bit Audio sounds fine to here. me, but uh, I'm sure someone's going to complain about it in 10 seconds. Inevitable. Oh, how um, dare. Let me make sure that we are okay here. We are going to add this uh, fundraiser here. I'm going to try to get this going. Why can't I? Ah, here we go. Aha. Oh, all sorts of fun stuff. It's, all right, it's save. Fundraiser. So, on our live stream, you should be able to see that this is a fundraiser for the Trevor Project through YouTube Giving. Uh, a wonderful charity. Uh, you probably heard about it before. Uh, doing a lot of work um, to help uh, provide resources to LGBT youth um, for crisis intervention, suicide prevention, and all that really good, really important stuff. So if you are interested in supporting that, which we, we would hope you are, because they, they do good work, uh, please consider uh, clicking the link uh, in the description, or you should see an overlay with the whole uh, with the whole. Thing I had to close and reopen on. it since I had it open beforehand. So if you don't see okay. it, close the stream, reopen the stream, and cool, it should cool, be there. Cool. I, I am... see it. It's, uh, it's like a, a bar overlay on the chat itself, which is You've a very already raised uh, seventy dollars. Beautiful. At right, ninety. Me... At ninety. Thanks, guys. Oh wait, no, here. it just went back down to seventy. Uh, well, almost, it's okay. Thanks. People be donating. Oh, there it is. There it is. Woohoo! Right. Thank oh. you, friends. <laughs> well, this is already off to a great start. Oh yes. It's it we're we're cracking. Oh boy, there's so many dogs. Every road trip start, starts like this. Oh, we're so ready to go. We're so ready. Wait, I forgot my toothbrush. Wait, I forgot my suitcase. Yes. Yeah, so does anyone need to go before we leave? Now's the time. I don't want to be stopping at a Wawa in 30 minutes. <laughs> Wait, can I can I have a snack? Stopping. Can I get a snack? Yeah, can we get can we get donuts? Can we go to Tim Hortons? All right, I'm gonna give you gas money. You can run inside and get yourself some peanut M and M's while you pay for the. For the meter. Okay. Tim Hortons. It's better in Canada. <laughs> We're not in Canada. What? We're not. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I'm gonna fall asleep now. <laughs> Wake me up in seven hours. Wake me up before you go. Go. Oh no. So what are we doing? Blue, where, what are we doing today? What are we doing? We're gonna go pet all the dogs. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to place yeah. a donation here. There you um, go. Because we are donating all of the proceeds from the. Every month is Pride Month if you allow yourself to be consumed by hubris uh, shirts. Yep. Ah, damn it, I can't. Ah, okay, well, I'll, I'll donate it later because I I'm waiting on my new credit card to come in the mail. Uh, so balls, I can't actually donate right now. Heck. So uh, imagine the progress bar is at five thousand because that's the that's the money that we made off of our uh, off of our shirts and all of those profits are going right in to uh, yep. this charity. So. Um, yep. mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I can't uh, drop that money right now because it won't let me connect a bank account. That is actually kind of uh, frustrating. Um, do you want me to run and get mine and see if I can do it? I mean, yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, please hold, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, oh, oh, wait, who's this old man? It's just some old guy. I don't just really know dude? what his deal is. What's yeah. He? Just a mysterious. <gasps> King Robosferama's high rule. He was King Robosferama's high rule. No, no way. Uh, that's a joke for you, Point Crow fans out there. <laughs> ah, oh. someone wants to know if they buy the shirt now, if the proceeds will still get to the Trevor Project. Uh, if I don't know if it's still available. I thought we were only doing it on a. Uh, on a limited run. I mean, if, if you can, uh, yeah, all, all the proceeds from that shirt will go to the Trevor Project, but I, I'm like 90% sure that uh, the, the store page is closed. <laughs> oh, hello, Little Miss. Oh, Cleo has made an appearance. She has graced us with her presence. Oh. Cleo's a little jealous that we're going to go pet so many dogs. She had yeah. to, you know, insert herself into the stream early. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, King Rome is dumb. Let's not listen to whatever he's talking about. <laughs> He I seems like kind of matter. a dick and not the kind of father figure that we want in our lives. He's not a Very dog sweet. and therefore he's not important uh, to the goal of this stream. We have to stay on task. I've decided, I don't usually jump on these streams and so I've decided to make it my sole responsibility to somehow make a, <laughs> somehow keep us on task. Unlike the last time I was on stream during the Dragon Rush, in which case we, uh, 
we had to track down input a few times. Yeah, that was. Uh, I was actually it's watching been... back over the the, the Dragon yeah. Rush um, highlights uh, the other day in preparation, uh, and those were fun. I have this time. Uh, I, I have a little trick uh, up my sleeve, which I will attempt to demonstrate in a moment here as we get going. Um, all right, we have taken the paraglider. Now we uh, theoretically go to to deck Ganon, but. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm, the dogs, mm -hmm. uh, the dogs need, need love. Yes. Uh, and, and what good is destroying Ganon if we don't, if we don't provide the love and care for all the good boys and girls, th those good pups all across Hyrule? Exactly. It's, it's about building the team. Oops. I think I it would be neat if you just had a bunch of dogs with you when you went to go deck Ganon. Like, instead of getting the Master Sword, you're just like, actually, I have foregone weaponry in favor of this army of canines. <laughs> exactly. I don't remember my Twitter The Master password. Doge. Oh, no. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. In case anyone's wondering why I haven't been active on Twitter in months, it's because I cannot remember the password. <laughs> All right. Let's see if mm. I can figure it out. Love that. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, you messed up. Just, just die. Just let yourself die. Yeah. No, I, I held it instead of, uh, instead of tapping it. I was nervous. All right, oh. let's try that again. Let's try that again. Oh no. Oh no no no. I, I learned, <laughs> I, I learned how to boomy zoomy. I've done it at least twice. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. One of them was ten minutes before the see. stream. One of them was on on Friday as I was hastily setting up the speed run file for us today. Mmm. I'm in. <laughs> Spicy. Alright. Boo 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 it, I, I, I tried, and then it was like, hmm, that's a suspicious amount of money. Damn it. So, uh, <laughs> oh, well. I'm going to, yeah, I, I'm going to, give me just a sec. I'm going on mute again, and then uh, I'll be right back, and we'll see if I can make that progress bar go up a little bit. Fun. <laughs> very, very mundane start to this stream, as usual. We are not, we are not okay. uh, speedrunning prodigies. It's it's best to you know we we've got three of these charity streams that we're gonna be doing so we can uh, we can we can make it by the end of them we will have seen all the dogs that we needed to yes. see even if uh -huh. it's, it's a bit of a, I a boomy zoomed. start oh Woo! you did it I did it oh. I didn't get to go far because I don't really have a lot of stamina but I did it I boomy zoomed <laughs> like a grown up no. zoomy boomy. You got dangerously close to dropping yourself with no stamina in the middle of that uh, ruin full of active oh, guardians. Yeah. No, don't worry. <laughs> That's exactly where we are. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Yeah, the thing is, uh, usually you do uh, like like BTBs and stuff because it doesn't take any, uh, doesn't take a lot of um, stamina. stamina to set up. Cleo is uh, curled up behind us on the couch. Cleo's looking quite adorable. Taking a very cute nap. So, uh, Indigo, cute, what cute. is the, the first place we're going to? I'm heading over to Kakariko Village, but I know there, there's oh, a, oh. a handful of, of, of dogs that we need to go uh, that we need to go find you, here. I, I'm so glad that you asked. See, there's a there's a few stables that are sort of so a lot of the dogs that we need to find. Uh, I believe there are 14 of them total. Yes. Are at various stables, and there's kind of a few near Kakariko Village, okay. but none of them are necessarily en route to Kakariko Village. So okay. I think if we are, if we're trying to make sure that, are we talking to Impa first? Is there, do we have to talk to her? Let's first? talk Probably. to Impa first. Okay, in that case, you should just head to Kakariko Village Sweet. and get that out of the way before we actually worry about finding any okay. dogs because they're gonna kind of take us away from the village. Nope, did that wrong. I keep, keep doing this in the wrong order. You know what? Just gonna, just gonna glide. <laughs> Damn it! Eventually, we will get a horse. <laughs> All right, I successfully dropped one k in there. Nice. Uh, the nice. other four k, we might need to hold off on a little bit. We, we might need to wait until later. Okay, sweet. And and Red, I, I will I will pay you back for that because the 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 crowd made money went uh, into my account. And we'll we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll even that out. <laughs> All right, just a second. I'll be right back. I gotta go put some stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do our best red impressions while she's gone? Hey, uh, 
Red here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fooled me. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. It's like she, she never nope, even left. Like she's still, the, still hanging out in this dream. I'm going for Mazuka impression more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Check out. Checks out. <sighs> Jack O'Connell in chat who asked what the goal of the stream is. The goal is to speak to Impa and then find a bunch of dogs. Just as many dogs as we can. Uh, because, man, we're just trying to finish at least well, something. At least some progress. <laughs> Why? It, well, once it gets going, it gets going. But early game Zelda is slow, unless you're like actually a speedrunner, ah. in which case it, it, it's really fast. <laughs> all right. All right, kiddos, I'm back. Sorry about all that. Uh... <laughs> You'd think I'd have known better than to be like, hey, bank, on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, bank. You mind if I take out $5,000 and drop that on something you've never seen me pay for before? I mean. <laughs> Don't be suspicious. Don't be Don't suspicious. Be suspicious. <laughs> oh, a well, That was the second time that we have, in a recorded setting, started doing the Don't Be Suspicious bit. Because mm -hmm. I think that was a question response to one of the podcasts. It was. It if you exactly haven't right. checked out the OS pod, you should, because it is fun, and fun should, is good. Yeah. <laughs> Available on all fine podcasting platforms. <laughs> Find okay, your we favorite, need somebody too. to do like the, Yeah, we need someone to do the cheerful, like, ukulele music in the background. We're like, we're like Available on all your favorite platforms. Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, <laughs> those other things. Stitcher. Tune in bi-weekly for the OS pod. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's going to take a while, team. This is why we have three streams of this. We're doing this again on Wednesday and then again on Saturday evening uh, with, oh, with other charities uh, in future times. But we're starting here. I was busy here. wrangling my bank. What, what did I miss? I, I died. Oh, I, I, tried to do, I tried to do a bomb launch. Uh, Not and I died. Impa! <laughs> we are en route to our, our matron from last time, the, the lady of our, our eye. Uh, Impa, and it is. Is that going. what Impa is? <laughs> I don't. I assume. No. <laughs> Wait, the lady of what? If nobody, if nobody stops me when I'm talking, I'm just gonna keep saying things and assuming that they're correct. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Whew, okay. Uh, well, I see we've got about seventeen hundred people in uh, uh watching, and we've reached, we've raised um about that much money, oh, which wow. is already pretty good. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice job. Wow. Is the OS pod available by uh, cup and string phone? Well, if you put a cup, so, I mean, it's technically, but you would have to do a little bit of jerry-rigging on your end. You'd have to put some sort of device playing the OS pod uh, out of, right next to a cup, and then you could listen to a cup that's attached to a string to that cup. So you could, but you would need someone to be playing the podcast. So the, the short answer is no, but the long answer is... Um, through your own determination, anything is possible. So if you consider your computer or phone a cup, and you consider mm -hmm. wireless internet a string, then in that case, <laughs> is this just going to be booby zooby for a <laughs> Well, that didn't get me any distance at all. Damn. Uh, How many times do we think Blue will die in the stream? Well, if he keeps trying to do a this lot. quite often. I thought this was going to speed this up. Clearly it will not. I think the, the, the move is going to be to acquire a horse. I mean, but I thought you were practicing the boomy zoomies. I, well, apparently I it's not doing me a lot of good. Uh, where, where do they keep the horses? In the back. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, I see. We're bringing little Nas X into this now. Why wouldn't oh, you? I'm so proud of him. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, man. Someone who has truly managed to be the funniest person, uh, the funniest right? artist of this generation. <laughs> I love how every time someone's like, we get it, you're gay, quit rubbing my face in it. He's like, I'm going to wear even more flamboyant clothes just for you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. look better than you do while I do it. Oh, so good. <laughs> Honestly, oh like, I, God, I, I don't tend to listen to that much pop music, you know? Like, I, I tend to, mm -hmm. I have very, like, uh, sedentary tastes in music. It's all, like... 80s rock and shit like that uh mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm. some of those some of those new young pop stars who are years younger than me which is terrifying to think about they're really they're, they're all right you know <laughs> yeah. i think the my kids are all right i have mm. a uh spotify playlist that is literally called oops all odd oh, songs yeah. 
That did not work <laughs> at all. No. Nope. Oh, that's death. I was trying to throw uh, a bomb, and then I turned in the wrong direction at the last minute. You know, oh. pro strats. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I have a playlist called Oops All Songs that I play. Like, you know when you're just, like, feeling weird and you need to listen to weird music? There's weirdly oh, yeah. no Weird Al on there, though. I should probably fix that. Huh. I don't know if he's on Spotify. Oh, yeah. He's... <laughs> I, I guarantee you Weird Al is on Weird Spotify. Al is definitely on Spotify. <laughs> gotcha. But yeah. Most certainly. Including my I favorite song, on, uh... The Acoustics in the Bathroom. Ooh. Ooh. It's a song nice. about how the acoustics in the bathroom are very good. <laughs> they are. I mean, they're yeah. right. It's yeah. not a lie. Uh, I have a I playlist have, uh... on Spotify that a, a friend made um, a friend made three years ago. And uh, it's it's just called the only song that matters, and the only song on it is a, uh, I think men at <laughs> men at work. Oh, good. I, the safety dance. I haven't had the heart to delete it, so it's just sort of there. I think safety dance is men without hats. God damn it! Yeah, no. All these bands them. sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a playlist well, called easy listening music that I put on in the background when I need to work. Uh, spoiler alert. None of it is easy listening music. <laughs> I, oh. yeah, uh, I've been listening to a three-hour loop of the Ace Attorney Pursuit music whenever I need to get work done, and it's I highly recommend. <laughs> Good. Oh, amazing. I feel like the Sonic Drowning music would do the same thing. I feel like that would stress me out too much. What? Is that not the point? <laughs> no, it's about being motivated, not being stressed, you know? You want to uh-huh. zone in. Well, I find the concept the of death very motivating. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Clip for the highlight reel. <laughs> what? <laughs> I also have two separate playlists. One is called Boat, and the other is called Boat, but Bops. It's for when you want sea shanties at various degrees of extremeness. Yeah, because, like, you know, not all sea shanties are, like, upbeat and happy. Some of them are, like, sad. Some of them sad. are just sad. So that goes on <laughs> Boat. But, like, if you just want Bops, like, Wellerman and Bonnie Ship the Diamond. Bonnie Ship the Diamond. Yeah, yeah. all those are on boat, but bops. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. A lot of those shanties are like kind of just a half step removed from classic country and the whole like, oh, rather than oh, my wife left me and took my truck. It's more like ah, oh, I had to leave my woman for the sea and now she has been taken by the great Grey Widowmaker <laughs> by her grief. And it's like ah, oh, that's, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> my uh, it's sick five part harmony on that one. My favorite is probably the retirement song, if only for the line, the captain, he got drunk one night and sank the blasted cannon. That's very funny. Um, <laughs> That's very funny. It's, it's very fun and upbeat. And it's just like, he's like, yes, I was the best gunner at, ever, except for then the captain <laughs> dropped the cannon in the ocean. It's like, you know, sometimes these things just happen. I don't know how, mm-hmm. but they do. Come on. Oh my God, so, how does uh, anyone play this game fast? Gun variant. <laughs> uh, so my younger brother... Uh, works on boats. He just actually finished up sailing up. He works on tall ships specifically. And he just Ooh. finished sailing from Maine to New York. And um, I asked him, like, hey, do you guys sing shanties and stuff when you do shanty related tasks? And he's like, well, we do sing Damn things, it. but they're not necessarily <laughs> shanties. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, you know, we were singing like New York state of mind and stuff uh, okay. <laughs> when we were going to New York because we were like, well, let's just be thematic about it. He's like, anything that you can get um, your, like, 15 mates to sing in rhythm with you while you're hauling rope or whatever it is that people do on boats will qualify as a good enough for boat work. I believe rope is at least tangentially involved in the process, but I've been led to believe that it's somewhat more complicated than simply hauling things. Uh, I'm sure that he would have more specific things that he does, but I... To be completely honest, don't totally understand what exactly it is he does, and uh, he doesn't really understand what my job is either. So I feel like it's a really good two-way street that we've got set up there. Oh, um, the thing, man, down the I would just like to uh, shout out to the few different people asking uh, why Indigo and Red aren't playing at all. They're, they're not here, bruh. <laughs> oh man, I wish. <laughs> Each yeah, several states away. <laughs> like we are on a voice call. We're not all in the same room. <laughs> and like. Breath of the Wild is single player. What are you Ow. talking about? <laughs> also, yeah. uh, so you're getting stuck to... with my bad gameplay, and you're gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. if you don't like it, you'll get my even worse gameplay. <laughs> so help me, I will turn this stream around. You're going back played, to the uh, Great Plateau. For... I played for five minutes during the um, Dragon Rush <coughs> stream, 
uh, and I threw our only weapon away and then gave the controller back to Blue, and then we both forgot that we had thrown it away. So I think that there is a highlight in the highlight reel where we don't uh, have yes. a sword. Yeah, that's in the highlight. We're fighting a Lazalfos on the, oh, the bridge of, of Lake Hylia, uh, and I was conspicuously swordless. <laughs> God, I'm excited for Breath of the Wild, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Breath of the Wilder with the protagonist. You know how they didn't actually show like Link's face in the second trailer? It's because mm -hmm. in this game, Link is played by Gene Wilder. Uh. <laughs> You're already at 1900. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Breath of the Wild 2, your princess is under another castle. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mario. <laughs> I mean, technically it's the same castle. Someone did ask if yeah. Cleo can play, and I assure you she can't. It's not in her contract. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's contracted only to be HR, uh, and we're not even sure she does that. So. <laughs> well, no, it's because she's impartial. She can be human resources because she's not a human. That's true. Otherwise, she oh, would have yeah, an unfair yeah. bias. Yes. Yeah. For the record, uh, so for those of you just joining us, uh, we are streaming the uh, dog percent challenge of Breath of the Wild, uh, yes. where we attempt to speedrun petting all the dogs in Breath of the Wild. Have we pet any dogs yet, Blue? Uh, no. Who do you think I am? Of course we haven't. Oh, but you can get a horse. There's horses. I was off for like Wait. 10 minutes trying to get my horse. credit card working. Horse! I, I know, but I'm trying horse. to avoid the guardian. Horse! <laughs> Red, uh, the only thing horse! we accomplished while you were off getting your credit card was doing terrible impressions of you while you had a song. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who did an impression. <laughs> Correct. Well, now I'm deeply concerned about what I missed. Uh, but we are raising money for the Trevor Project, which does very good work uh, helping LGBT, etc. youth. Uh, we're also going to be donating uh, roughly $5,000, which is the proceeds from... We did a special limited run of the uh, every month is Pride Month if you allow your stuff to be consumed by Hubris Designer in our crowdmate shop, and we're donating the proceeds. Uh, except I tried donating all of them earlier in the stream, and uh, my uh, credit card threatened to murder me, so we're, we're doing it in chunks. We, we donated 1,000 so far. Your credit card held you at knife point. <laughs> well, well, it's more like I was trying to negotiate with the Don on the day of his daughter's wedding, you know? Uh. Like, it was just leaning back against the desk like, you come to me. <laughs> You ask for five thousand dollars in a lump sum after you've never had me pay this thing before, <laughs> and I'm like, well, so I thought we were cool with YouTube. I, I thought we knew what they were. It's like, oh, is that what you think? Is that how you think we work? So, you come to do this anyway. on this the day of my friend's charity stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll be getting the rest of that in there uh, later. But right now, we're uh, we're, we're letting my my poor card <laughs> sweat it off. Um, but we've just hit uh, 2,000 rays uh, of our nice. $10,000 today goal. Woo, woo, woo! Um, huh? Yeah. Woo, woo. Yeah. Doing the most for the charities, you know? Yeah, yeah. Getting our, uh, doing our due diligence. Oh, I see that yellow is in the chat. Yellow! Hello, oh! yellow. <laughs> <Hey>. Yes! <laughs> Blue just got booked out of the air. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a... rough, my dude. <laughs> Oh, you don't have the life, stamina for I, that. I feel like getting to sort of relive the moments after they happen. You know, we get the reaction and then get the, uh, yeah. the instant playback. It's like watching like a basketball game or something. So beautiful. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, unrelated to anything anyone said in the chat, I'm just honestly curious. Uh, how's everyone's uh, feeling about Big Time Rush coming back? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> huh. Well, I'm glad somebody has a strong opinion about this. My, my sister texted me, she's like, do you want to go to the concert? I'm like, when? She's like, uh, about Fine. the weekend before you're taking off for vacation? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, I cannot. <laughs> uh, I also immediately, so I saw on TikTok that Big Time Rush was coming back to kind of flag myself as the token youngest member of this squad. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I immediately texted all of my friends, like, oh my god, guys, who wants to go to the Big Time Rush concert? And they were like, Sophie, uh, Indigo, what are you talking about? Uh, and the answer was, I am talking about uh, another one of those classic early 2000s boy bands getting back together. We already know, we already be knowing that the Joe Bros got back together. Yes. And it was only it was only natural that another group follow in their footsteps because once something goes well for one group, you know, the rest of them gotta follow suit. Okay. Uh, Jesse McCartney has <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Uh I I did not know what big time rush was except <laughs> as a joke in that one vine you know the one where it's like chill bro i don't know you're in a big time uh, uh, rush uh, exactly oh. yeah that's literally all i knew about it so i googled it uh surreptitiously hoping to be mm -hmm, sneaky about mm -hmm. it uh and i find that it is in fact a uh a sitcom about a fictional boy band yes and then i guess they made the boy band real well they had to meet a real boy band because they have to it's like hannah montana 
Yeah, oh. it's icing. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah. it was, it's not like they're making a story about a group that already exists. Instead, they're mm-hmm. making a group and then making the story about them. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Listen, I had three younger sisters. This played a lot in my household. (laughs) Fascinating. I watched a lot of Big Time Rush sort of against my will because it was just always on. (laughs) It was sort of like they replaced Zoe 101 by starting to play Big Time Rush. Yeah, pretty much. And so it was just like, well, I guess it's 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. I'll watch this. Did Zoe 101 end with, like, her phone going into the fountain after, like, what's-his-face texted that he liked her? Was that, like, not the end in just the last episode I saw? <laughs> it sounds right, but honestly, I, could, I didn't watch enough of Zoe 101 to be able to tell you any salient details about the plot of that show. <laughs> All right, this is going to be embarrassing. What's Zoe 101? It's another one of the, like, tween sitcoms yeah. of the early 2000s. It's a sitcom okay. about right. a bur- girl that goes to boarding school. But it's, yeah, like, basically. a cool uh-huh. boarding school. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Oh, um, apparently I, no, Zoe 101, uh, Zoe 101 ended up prom night with them kissing. Uh, so that must have only, just been like a no. season finale. The only thing I remember about Zoe 101 is the episode where Vince cheated and like the main guy like went through a lot of effort to like keep that fact hidden. And then he was like, Vince cheated. Everyone's like, Ugh. and that's the only thing I ever remember from that show at all. Um, my favorite. So, Chad, who wants me to talk about my favorite reboot episode? No. <laughs> my uh, favorite, my favorite Zoe 101 episode is the one where they had to be cheerleaders for what's his face, and they had the cheer rejected, uh, which my siblings and I still do to each other when like we ask for something and my parents are like, no, we go rejected, rejected. Yeah, you just got rejected. <laughs> so that that is my favorite Zoe 101 member. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, Red, everyone wants you to, apparently. You fools. I've gotten the <laughs> chat on you, my side. <laughs> why would you open the Pandora's box of reboot discussion? <laughs> this is only good for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, somebody suggested the compromise of Over the Garden, the Wall, a show that I think all of us like. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it, so. <gasps> oh my god! I don't so watch sorry. TV. Oh. I exist in a fugue state. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, we could. Uh, I recently watched two seasons of NCIS for no reason. It's not good. I don't recommend it. <laughs> could if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, it's I watched actually very bad. I watched some Criminal Minds, which was um. Oh, I'm, that's excellent. Well, Criminal that's Minds I'm I like. Say, like I, I feel like this is like the most loaded praise I can give it, but for the time, it's surprisingly <laughs> good. I mean, the time being, you know, 2005. Is but it like, still going, or did it like stop no, recently? No, it, it had 15 seasons. So I, okay. I recently watched all 15 seasons of uh, Criminal Minds in order, and I don't oh recommend going past season eight. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, gonna say. I think I, I watched till season 10, and then like they stopped putting it on Netflix. So I'm like, it's not worth finding <laughs> at this point. Yeah, <laughs> they had up to season I think 13 on Netflix, and then you have to switch over to Hulu or just. You know, watch it somewhere else because it's not a hard show to find. Uh, yeah. But enjoy, yeah, it's it's one of the better it. procedurals because I think they have a more interesting angle on how they go about solving the problems. Um, yeah, I like and it's procedurals like, a lot. So. Um, someone. <laughs> I think what's interesting is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say someone asked how you watch two seasons of a show without liking it, and clearly they have not spent enough time in the OSP world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> I don't know if they know this or not, but I have a podcast where I make let people choose terrible movies for me to watch. So, uh, I have a lot of tolerance for watching a lot of something that I don't particularly like. Uh, and also, at a certain point, it just becomes like a completionist thing, and I'm like, well, I've already started this, so yeah. I, guess I, gotta, I gotta keep it up. Uh, but I do not think I will be continuing NCIS, because despite the fact that I got through two seasons of it, uh, it was bad the whole time, and I, I, don't, I don't enjoy it. Unlike Criminal Minds, which was pretty good for its time and cis has aged poorly sorry criminal minds is in this weird space where like clearly they are they are dedicated enough to being accurate about the profiling side of things that they Mm -hmm. kind of end up sidestepping a lot of the more like harmful tropes from that era you know Mm -hmm. like yeah you know the the whole oh scary mental illness bad guy like they 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 touch on that a little bit but they always they always feel compelled to like look straight at the camera and be like ocd does not compel people to do crimes this is an extreme specific case that's combined with a bunch of other stuff going on or like 
there, there was one that I remember because I was like, wow, in 2005, where they were like, just because the bad guy is a man who wears women's clothing to infiltrate their safe spaces does not mean that this reflects poorly on anybody who cross-dresses or identifies mm -hmm. as a gender mm -hmm. other than, and like, they're staring straight into the camera, and I'm like, okay, all right, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> um, yeah. It doesn't mean uh, they pulled it off, but it means they were trying. <laughs> we're already at 2.5. With not a dog pet yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine how much donations we'll get to actually get dogs. Maybe people, if they oh, think they, if they donate, you'll go faster. Ha! Oh, God. Uh, no. You must be new here. <laughs> it's not fair of you to, to ask me what my thoughts are on leverage when nobody else in this group watches it. But I'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you get us to 3,000, I'll temporarily hijack the chat and start talking about why leverage is really good, including the reboot. Red, if you well, start talking you guys... about things uh, that I have no idea, I'm going to start talking about High School Musical, the musical, the show. Oh, I hate I it no here. <laughs> I love educating myself. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but yes, I have I have a lot of thoughts on uh, on the leverage remake and how it's yeah, uh, uh, continuing the tone. So let's do it. Let's let's get the three thousand and then I'll give you my my short form essay on it. There you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yellow Excellent. save me. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow's in the chat. He does not care. <laughs> yeah. Of course, don't. How, no okay, how about we do this? You. I start the that... rant at three thousand and then I end it. Either when I Don't run out of steam or when we hit 3.5. Well, no, because then people won't donate, so you keep ranting. Oh no, you're right. But the, but the people who don't want me to keep ranting. How about this? Like Blue, for instance. How about this? You get five minutes of rant for every, like hundred we go up. Ooh. <laughs> to encourage people to keep donating. Yeah, I I lack the ability to donate because uh, my card got got last week, so I'm waiting for a new one yeah. in the mail. Uh, so I am, I am, uh, powerless. Thank you, horse, for running your dumb face into the cliff wall. Leave your Thanks. horse alone. <laughs> you haven't even named it or given it a bridle yet. I haven't been to, uh, horse. I haven't been to the stable. Well, that sounds like a you problem. I'm going there now! <laughs> <laughs> the horse will turn this car around, so help him. Yeah, We're because I can't control our... this dumb horse. <laughs> We're fulfilling our role of being the bratty kids in the backseat. <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> oh. I need to stop for a snack. Yeah, can we get lunch? We have <laughs> apples <laughs> right here. There's a dinosaur museum. Let's go there. But I don't like oh. apples. I'm allergic. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just trying to like hold my Game Boy under a street light so that the screen is illuminated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fully That's... passed out in the back because we're awake way earlier than I'm used to. <laughs> hey, has to. I'm the one later. who doesn't need any sleep and is bugging the driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm the driver. <laughs> <laughs> I spilled my entire slushy in the back. Can we pull over? <laughs> I spilled my entire slushy into my mouth, and now I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Chad appears to have named your horse Rocinante, which is pretty sassy. Uh, I think that's the name of Don Quixote's yes, it's the horse. Yes, it's the name of Don Quixote's horse. Yeah. Oh, Don Quixote? Um, <laughs> oh, come on. Man. No, according, uh, according to one of the Oxford translations, they rhyme it with Don Fixit. So, according to some idiot British person somewhere... It is Don Quixote. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. You know, Britain, it. the place that doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah, they know what they're talking uh, about. Also, um, I just posted a really cute picture of Cleo uh, sleeping on my Instagram story. So, uh, Red oh, Indigo, you oh. should check that out. I'm checking it out right now. <laughs> oh. I, I guess I will open this to... Uh, you don't have to. Do some research. No, no, no. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's important to... Uh, <laughs> Yellow <laughs> responds, pain. <laughs> Very cute. Uh, I also misheard you when you said Don Quixote, and I heard Donkey Kong, so I'm assuming that we're riding Donkey Kong's horse. But Does Donkey you know, Kong have a horse name? Uh, oh, he does guy. now. <laughs> oh, Beetle! Beetle's here? Beetle's here! Over to your right. Right? Right? Keep going. There. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for the people in chat asking for OSP's opinion on the Owl House, uh, that show is cute and gay, and we stand here. Yes, <laughs> haven't so seen good. it, but I'm and down for cute and gay. <laughs> oh, Everybody should so watch cute. it. It's so good. It's, it's like, so good. And, and what's interesting about it is, like, season one, cash? they kind of paced yeah. it out. They took it a little bit slow. It was like episodic stuff, and then they were told, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it's a little too gay. We're only giving you one more season, and they were like, all right, let's speed run the plot. <laughs> this romantic stuff plot's consummating in five episodes. <laughs> Ooh, they, they accidentally compressed the gay into a smaller yes. space, so yes. it's more impactful. 
Uh, but yes, everybody should watch it. It's really, really good and cute. And the animation is like cute, but sometimes mm -hmm. they crank it up and it becomes incredible for like the really crazy fight scene. Also, I can't help but notice that we seem to have hit 3,000 rays. You have five minutes. So I'm timing you. Go. Yeah. So okay, all right. So, Leverage, the remake, is really good. It's, a, it's like a continuation of the original show. It's eight years later. It's been eight years since the first show ended, so this makes perfect sense. Everyone's the right age. Um, and uh, they're sort of having to, like, do some clever work to shuffle around. Like, some of the actors can't be there. Uh, uh, Alden Hodges is, like, in uh, Black Adam now. <laughs> he's a much be like bigger deal actor than he was when he was playing the funny hacker guy. So he's there for, like, two episodes. And then they're like, you got to move on to bigger and better things, man. <laughs> Both your character and your actor. But we'll, like, have you on the phone occasionally. So get on out of here, you beautiful man. And then he leaves, and his younger kid sister is there. And she's great and fun and and like not just a replacement which is good and i knew they were going to handle these new characters well because in the first series uh one of the main actresses got pregnant in like the second season and of course when you know when one of your main actresses is pregnant you can't really like have her on the show as much uh she's got you know like health needs you have five and also, more minutes it's been one minute so far <laughs> yes thanks for the money guys <laughs> um, uh but uh so, so basically she got, you know, she got pregnant and they were like, okay, what are we going to do? I know, let's give her a really like nuanced and, and respectful arc about how she needs to go off and figure out her identity because she's this like grifter who only ever uses fake names. And she's like, I got to figure out who the real me is under all these fake faces. And she goes off and there's this whole thing about like how the team feels kind of broken without her. And like, they, they get a character to fill her role, but she's not Dog. like the same character. She does things in a totally different way. She doesn't have the same chemistry with the team. There's no just like swapping out and replacing, which is really solid writing and it's respectful of the actors and the characters, which is just incredibly good. So I was pretty confident that they would be able to handle it well for the reboot. Uh, and then they did, but you, cause you know, like I, it's still surprising. I've seen a lot of shows go very, very bad <laughs> uh, it, when they get like remakes or continuations or extra like sudden bursts of money or whatever. So I was a little worried that maybe it wasn't gonna be good, but it is, uh, and the whole thing, is on IMDb TV, which is like free. Like they make you make an account, but you can watch all the episodes on it and they don't make you pay for anything or even give them your card information for later. So that's cool. Uh, so both the original show, all of it, and the first eight episodes of the new one are on there and you should all watch it uh, because it's really good. It's like fun heist of the week Robin Hood stuff. Um, sorry, chat's yelling dog. Did we find a dog? We yeah. Did. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no! We fed the dog I don't too. Think it's one of the dogs that we need, according to the treasure. No, it's got to be because you, you need all the dogs. So you need to. The master uh, list does not include every dog, though, for treasure. What? what? Just fourteen dogs. Oh. We should see every dog because yeah, all yeah. dogs are good boys. Indigo, you might uh, need to find a better list then. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> I'm uh, so we in, guys. <laughs> For those in chat, we were discuss. Uh, I was discussing uh, yeah. Leverage, uh, a show from 2008 to 2012 that recently got a continuation after a sudden burst of popularity. Uh, you now uh, have until 4:45. Oh Jesus! Or 3:45 uh, your well, time. All right, Indigo, yeah. where are we going uh, next? Real quick. Yeah. Uh, 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 to the mainframe. Okay. Um. <laughs> Pull up MapQuest. Hashtag one job. <laughs> no, I told her to find another list. Hey. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we are currently at La Stable the, over there. The so we should probably stable. head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we could continue on towards um, the. Aren't they numbered? Is it Hateno Village or? Yeah, we can go to Hateno. I think it's Hateno Village. Okay. That's kind of just like on the way. So uh, Hateno. Like that. Let's go to Hateno. Mm -hmm. All right, Red, resume. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, for those of you who don't know anything about what I'm talking about, uh, Leverage. Uh, was a show that ran for five seasons back in about 2008 to 2012. It is currently getting a continuation. It's not a reboot. It's got most of the same cast. Uh, the, the, it's just like, oh, eight years have passed. We're getting the, again, the bang back together to do what we do. And what they do is uh, they are a bunch of criminals who uh, run cons on bad guys and uh, take their money and give it to good guys. It's very much a Robin Hood thing. It gets called out like that in universe several times. Uh, they're, they're very self-aware about the whole thing. It's a textbook five-man band. They've got great character dynamics and chemistry. The dialogue is delightful. Um, yeah, there you go. And uh, it's really good. And everybody should watch it. 
It's it available for free on a legitimate streaming platform. You don't even need to pirate it. Oh, God, sorry. I just remembered a really funny bit from the show I'm talking about. Because, uh, <laughs> of course, they are, of course, a, a show. Uh, but they are also criminals in said show. And there's a bit at one point where they're, like, camped out somewhere and the hacker's now in the back of the van with his horse. laptop. And he's like, oh, the Wi-Fi out here sucks. I can't even pirate the most recent episode of Doctor Who. And the thief looks directly into the camera and says, hey, pirating's a crime. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, so, have, have you seen those, like... Great memes where it's like you wouldn't download a car and it shows like people 3d printing plus <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> similar energy um mm -hmm. but yeah no it's uh it's a good show it's uh it's great fun um and i highly recommend it to everybody what am i gonna do with the with the rest the of other 10 minutes? minutes you have <laughs> <laughs> um Hmm. Well, you can pick a different well, show. I, it doesn't have to it's true. entirely be this show. Yeah, the floor is yours. Yeah. Whether or not you spend the whole time talking about leverage is, is, is up to you. Oh, I mean, I That's really true. work best when I'm, like, rebelling against you guys trying to get me to stop, so... Yeah, I, I, I guess I, what I'm learning in the course of the stream is just run with it. <laughs> My powers are limited. <laughs> no, it's just because you got your hands on the controller and no credit People want to talk about reboot. <laughs> oh, well. All right. It, <laughs> the harder really sell. Well, okay. Here, here's you just the thing. got here's another the thing. five minutes. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm gonna start cutting them down. You're gonna only get yeah. two minutes per now, so you have three okay. minutes. Go. <gasps> All right. So here's the thing. Reboot is is a harder sell. I recognize that, but it is a show that is very near and dear to my heart. It's like the oh, first TV show nice. I ever watched, and uh, oh. it, it was uh, it was one of the first fully 3D animated shows, which means it is chunky, especially in the first season. Uh, it it ran like starting in 1995 to tell you how early this is. Like this is the this is the company that did Transformers Beast Wars, you know, that guy, those guys. Uh, and I know a lot more of you watch that than Reboot, but I like Reboot more, especially because in Reboot, everything is set inside a computer, which kind of helps explain why everything is 3D rendered and doesn't look all that great in the first season. Whereas with Beast Wars, it's like, you're supposed to, you're telling me that this is supposed to look like a real gorilla? You kidding me? Uh, but that's, you know, whatever. I, I shouldn't be dissing a show I've never watched. Um, <clears throat> Reboot is set inside a computer, and it has one of the best uh, escalations of stakes I've ever seen. Like, they, they completely whip the status quo out from under you in Season 3. Uh, and it really only works because they spend the first two seasons on, like, just chill, fun, you know, adventures of the week stuff. Like, there, there's adult main characters, but the focus character is kind of this tag-along kid. So it's clearly aimed at, like, kids who are that kid's age. But as it came out, you know, people grew up alongside it. And then suddenly it takes a turn for the serious in season three. And that's good. Don't watch season four. There is a season four, but there shouldn't have been. So don't watch it. It, it ends perfectly at the end of season three. Um, you are technically also... at your new two minute time, but I'll let you keep <laughs> going. So well, OK, well, I'm just going to say, like, I, I know it's a tough sell. I know it looks chunky. I know anything animated before, sure, like, 2010 looks like that's hot garbage funny. to the modern audience. But I'm serious. Like, they did an incredible job getting across, like, the expression animation is really good. They nailed how to handle facial expressions oh, and like no. eye movement and stuff like that. Uh, they don't try too hard to make anybody look too real. So not really like going outside their means. Nobody has like hair that is supposed to look like hair. Uh, nobody has skin that's supposed to look like skin. So there's no subsurface scattering. Everybody kind of looks like an action figure, but it works in universe. So it's not even a problem. I'm telling you, man, it's a really good show. It's just so hard for me to get people to watch it because it looks kind of like ass for the first season. <laughs> Oh, my life is pain. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> you actually now have another two minutes. God. Well, well, well. <laughs> well I saw somebody in chat saying, uh, what about She-Ra? Yes, everybody should watch oh, the new She-Ra. Yes. It's on Netflix. It's so yeah, good. It's extremely it's gay, and also it's just great. And what I love about it is that She-Ra, and there's also a new He-Man, and they are like completely yes. opposite interpretations of how to handle continuing an old show. Because the new She-Ra is very much kind of an in-name-only thing. Like, everyone's names are the same, mm -hmm. and everyone's got the same color palette and rough general design, but like, Body types are different, hairstyles are different, relationships are different. This is like what you do if you have all the action figures and you're mashing them together and you're making up your own story. And then 20 years later, you get a show and you, you just make that story the show. The He-Man continuation is like a continuation of the show that ran fucking 40 years ago. <laughs> Nobody's even redesigned. Everyone's wearing the exact same stuff. They're just drawn better. It's crazy. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, but you get it. to hear Mark Hamill voice Skeletor, so it's oh, already a win. That's fun. Perfect. Yeah. Isn't the... Oh, you, are oh. You I, I just need the shrine. Yeah, for the I was gonna say because I don't think the puppies here. And yeah, Ducktales. No. Everybody should watch Ducktales 2017. It's really good. David Tennant to Scrooge McDuck. That's all you need. That's hysterical. <laughs> reminder Thank for, you, chat. from Yellow. Reminder for chat to donate. Click on the blue bar on the top of chat. Then click donate. That's it. That's all you have to do. <laughs> what do you mean all episodes of Reboot are free on YouTube? How long has that been true? <laughs> ah! I mean, I feel like oh, it's. God. 
there's like a sweet spot of shows that you can uh, just kind of find on YouTube if you search and look, scroll down three videos, and I feel like well, YouTube's got to be on that list. It was for a while, but then it got taken down because they tried doing a, like a remake slash reboot, and it was really, really uh, bad. So, eh. oh, the re-reboot boot? <laughs> Uh, yes, it's very bad. A couple people were it. asking what the charity is. It does say on the donate link, but it's for the Trevor Project. So please mm -hmm. donate away, especially if you want to hear Red keep rambling. Ram um, <laughs> Indigo, where am I going? <laughs> there... oh, well, I'm so glad you asked, Blue, because we have so many dogs to see, and this is only the beginning of our road trip, so you're going to want to make a left on Broad Street. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we kind of got two possible routes we could go here. We can go up towards Terrytown, or we can go down and clear, like, go circle around and clear all the other dogs. Yeah, well, let's, let's circle south. Yeah, we, we can't do Terrytown yet thinking. because we haven't yeah, done we the need Terrytown. To start. I also don't have enough money to start the quest. Yeah, totally. So then we're gonna head down towards Lorland. Just sort of follow the coast until eventually. Oh, we're going all the way down there. I oh, this we're horse is gonna be kind of useless for me then. No. Uh, well, bring it to the nearest uh, stable. I'll bring it to the next stable then. Yeah. Do you want mm -hmm. a snack? I'm gonna grab yeah. a snack. I'm okay, thank you though. Oh no, Cleo's on my skirt. I can't. Oh no. No. Ah. We're trapped. <laughs> you do? It's okay. I gave her butt scratches and she got up. <laughs> Oh, I've seen yeah, a few people yeah. in chat also mention uh, Kipo, uh, Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beasts, which is also very cool. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's like it's quite short. It's only a couple seasons, and uh, of the cartoons I recommend, it is the one where I, when I watched it, I was most like, oh yeah, this is for children. Um, mm -hmm. With the caveat that a couple parts get a little bit heavier, but it is very much in like the light, fluffy, you know, the hero befriends everybody, saves the day. Uh, it, you know stuff like that there there is much there's darker undertones but the way the show actually plays out i'm like all right yeah yeah this is this is a bright colorful kids cartoon that's actually for kids yeah not like steven universe where it's like it's for kids if you squint and don't watch future and uh <laughs> ignore all the subtext um oh uh, yes uh the good stuff oh so so much good um yeah, so uh, for those of you watching at home, this is not a speed run of Dog Percent. This is a casual playthrough of Dog Percent. Yes. <laughs> that it's way I'll be able to sleep at night. <laughs> uh, my thoughts on Spectacular Spider-Man are that it's really good and everybody should watch it. It um, will be the subject of a detailed diatribe eventually. Well, eventually, yeah. Like, like this, is one we're, yes. wow. this is one we're on the same page about. Spectacular Spider-Man is like one of the best Spider-Man cartoons. Yeah, um, Red, you, you got me to watch it by showing me clips from the uh, from the Venom parts. Specifically, uh -huh, the, the uh -huh. one scene that will be what the detailed diatribe is about. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the, 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 the fight where, where Spider-Man takes on the Sinister Six. Uh, and he's like, he he wakes up later, and we've learned that the symbiote basically took him out for a crime fight and joyride, and yes. it's like, whoa, yeah. spooky. Yeah. <laughs> so good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Also, some of the writers on that also worked on Gargoyles, another show that everybody should watch that I have a really hard time recommending to people because it was made in the 90s, so the animation kind of looks like ass some of the time. Eh, it's fine. Oh! So it's about whether or not the 90s animation adds charm or becomes distracting because like I have a similar problem sometimes with recommending people watch X-Men Evolution because I loved that oh, show as a kid yes! but the dialogue is deeply 90s there is an actual line where Nightcrawler oh, yep, says yo yep, that yep. homie's lingo is I knew dude. it! I knew it was gonna be the homie's <laughs> lingo line <laughs> Because it's the best line in the series, but uh, yeah, but <laughs> and Nightcrawler's the best character in that series. I mean, and Nightcrawler if you is the best character in every series he's in. I mean, Kurt yes, Wagner is a, a delight. He's he's my best boy. But uh, of one course. thing about Evolution, his characterization is kind of different than it is in almost any other show or comic. Because mm -hmm. he's he's a little more like he's like an insecure soft boy rather than like a swashbuckling pirate guy, which is yeah fucking rad. But no, he's he's good. He's cool for <laughs> other reasons. He's got a great dynamic with Kitty Pride. But yeah, it's ve it's painfully nineties oh, uh, in every conceivable way. It's very painfully nineties. And if you've yes. watched, uh, oh, what? No, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you've watched uh, Death Note dubbed, uh, you will not be able to look at Nightcrawler the same way in that show, because it's the same actor doing almost the same voice, except with an accent. I was going to say, Blue, uh, a couple people in chat asked what OSP's opinion on the Carmen San Diego reboot was. Oh, it's good uh, as fuck. So great. Super so good. good. There's yeah. like how it's got like a good animation in the last couple of years that's come out. Oh yeah, I like how it's got a once an episode uh, dramatic rooftop uh, moonlit fight quota. Yeah, <laughs> no. Every it's, time. It's really every time. great. And the way that they like show like global diversity is really really cool because obviously you know the fundamental premise is like it's a kids cartoon to teach the kiddos about like basic geography. Oh okay, I think I'm stuck here because Lurland Village is over that way. Infinity Train uh -oh. is also really good. And that one is yeah, definitely not for children to... in any conceivable way. Like, the first Far season, you go, Blue. You're like, 
I'm directly you... south of of Did of we miss Tano. the exit? I think you're going you were going north. You gotta you gotta go south. I am going south. The Tano's north of me. But you're going to Loreland, which is in the south. Yeah, and I'm going south. <laughs> I was in Hateno, now Hateno is north of me, ergo, I have gone south. <laughs> Interesting. I thought you said weast. Weast. Oh, jeez. Yeah, mm. here I am now on the coastline with Lurlin nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Maybe you haven't unlocked it yet. Yeah, the, Maybe you have to speak to Impa. farther down. Is it farther like, east or west of Hateno? It, it's literally directly below it. Hold like, on. I'm looking at the map. Hold on. If you, it's it's kind of to the west, but really it's it's so directly on the coast. It's basically just like straight north. I, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm on the coast. And it's not here. No, you're yeah, not. You've got to go spot. farther down. Yeah. But there's no. Did you remember to talk to him. Look at the image. Look at the image. Right oh. now you are so you are that way. according to yes. your compass. You are facing east. You need to go directly south, where that tall thing is. And okay. Like keep going past it. Where's your horse? So you were me. going. <laughs> Look at the map. Look it. <laughs> just keep, just follow your compass, John, in the corner, and just keep. Indigo, I think south. if you tell him to go south one more time, he's going to explode. <laughs> south is where the water Maybe. is, and horse don't water. Maybe you should tell him to raise his gain. To... <laughs> <laughs> All right, just I come on your stream <laughs> to be roasted. <laughs> Uh, this yeah, is an OSP so. stream, and to go, no one is safe from the roast. I don't <laughs> usually get roasted. There's an Usagi Ojimbo trailer on Netflix. Everybody, hold on. <laughs> what? I didn't understand no, half of the words you just said. Dumbass horse. No, it's fine. Nobody panic. I'll be right back. Okay. Quick, everyone, start your red impressions again. Anna, it's My humorous. <laughs> and to go. What do you mean, no, <laughs> stupid <laughs> horse. I... Oh, I'm so happy! Oh, it's happening. I hope it doesn't suck. It's happening! <laughs> okay, for context, uh, I've mentioned this too. Uh, another thing near and dear to my heart from my childhood is the comic series Usagi Ojimbo by Stan Sakai. It's really good. It's like it, it's like straight up Kurosawa samurai shit, but everyone in it is like a furry. Um, and they're making Yay. a Netflix show finally! <laughs> Here's the, the fun thing about this is that uh, almost everybody knows something about this because Stan Sakai is like besties with the creator of the Ninja Turtles and they kept having little crossovers. Uh -oh. So like the uh -oh. Ninja Turtles show up all the time in Usagi Ojimbo and Usagi pops into the Ninja Turtles. Every time they do an animated Ninja Turtles show, there's at least one episode where this time-traveling rabbit samurai shows up and Leo's like, oh my good buddy Usagi, let's hang out and fight some ninjas. <laughs> and it's, it's like, yelly. so... Yeah, so most people are like, oh, that, that rabbit guy from Ninja Turtles is getting his own show. No, you don't understand. He's got his own comic, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, I was uh, talking with some, uh, actually one of the greens, I texted at like 11 p.m. yesterday, and I was like, hey, what if we ran a D&D one-shot that was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and we just had like four <laughs> turtle monks? <laughs> oh, incredible. <clears throat> I think that could be really fun. Oh yeah. man, I'm getting lightheaded from get all this over thing that this transports your somehow, horse because only Because Lorlin yeah. is on the oh, other right. side of that cliff. So Good. one way or another, you need to get over it. But your horse. I who, I care about your horse. The horse has done nothing for me so far. The this horse season. has committed no crime, and you cannot just leave it on a beach. No, <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in camp. Leave the horse too. What is wrong with you people? You're going to be getting a call <laughs> from some animal welfare protection agencies. Would you leave our cat on the beach? No. I don't no, use Cleo as transportation. <laughs> Would you leave our car on the beach? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your horse in such a bad mood? I fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the horse doesn't seem too friendly anyway, so. Yeah, this horse has been a anti-dog rush. Pat. No, a pet. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing the give pats button. There you go, yeah. I don't think you can pat it while you're well, wearing your, like, yai. Uh, yeah. Well, I have to go back up to get over this cliff. That's fine. Is chat having a surreptitious Transformers Prime conversation without me? <laughs> <laughs> No. You guys really underestimate how much TV I watch in the average year. 
Most of the time I don't. Most of the time I'm scripting and I don't have the patience for TV, but when I do, oh baby. <laughs> two I weeks straight, nothing else in my weeks. schedule. That's the thing, mm -hmm. whenever you get onto a new show, you watch it for two weeks straight, and then every time it, it like, will be in the uh, OSP chat to plan something, and Red will be like, oh my god, have you guys heard about this new Columbo episode that I just watched? <laughs> like, dude, that show came out in the 80s, but yes, let's talk about this. Well, that's the thing, you know, like, I, just because it came out in the 80s doesn't mean I'm not still talking about it. I mean, Columbo's a great show, you should be talking about it. Yeah, and I'm not uh, the only person engaging in the Columbo renaissance. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Oh god. I watched I also that see... show so much as a kid, so it's really oh. exciting for me that people care about it again. So I'm like, yes. Yeah. Someone asked who's chewing, the, uh... and I would like to point out it is me. It is always me. I eat snacks on stream. <laughs> 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 Everyone else is like, can't eat snacks on stream. You'll hear the chewing on... I'm like, I'm... Eh. Chips. <laughs> Every time I put down my teacup on stream, Indigo threatens me with a knife. Because <laughs> <laughs> your teacup and your microphone are on the same table, and then it reverbs in your mic, and it... Ugh. I you should so do what I, I do. All these Carpet every <laughs> yeah, I super cut all these streams, and so every time there's like a small audio issue, we usually don't catch it in the moment, but then afterwards I'm like, oh no, this quote is funny, but there's like a giant boom sound boom. in the middle of it. <laughs> it's okay, I can animate something in the yeah, background. Yeah, you just need to animate, animate like a rock falling in the background. Yeah, just exactly. Blue in the background, just slamming a mug onto a table, regardless <laughs> of the context of what's actually The happening. thing is, though, it's like not even usually blue, it's generally me. <laughs> Cause yeah. I, Dumb no. fucking horse, get off of the root of this tree! <laughs> God. It's a good horse. Okay, so today, wait, what's our dog count so far? We've pet one, one dog, right? Okay, awesome. <laughs> wait, did you not get one in Hitano Village? There, where was the dog in Hitano Village? The dog in Hitano Village doesn't show up until you do the house quest. No. Oh, right? The dog in Hitano Village... I was not aware... So when I said... Indigo, where are we going? I guess part of my question was, why did we come to Hetano Village? Was there a dog here that we were going to be petting? Oh, no. Well, according to the list of dogs that you sent into the group chat, there is supposed to be a dog in Hetano Village. Yeah, it Village. shows up it's once you have the, the whole list. house, the dog hangs out outside your house. That's amazing. I assume we're not speedrunning the uh, house thing for the, for the dog. <laughs> Well, we'll do Hatano Village, I guess, after uh, Terrytown. Then we'll just circle back around. Do we have to build a whole ass house? That's not. Yeah. No, I, the speed run is only an hour and a half. Run. That well, because yeah. it's not it part of the. Right. It's not part of the speed run. It then is why is it in the map? The What's happening? It's listed as number one. It's like the first place you're supposed to go. Okay, I'm oh, googling so it. I'm googling it. <clears throat> Wait, is Chet arguing about? Background characters in Tales of Arcadia? Probably. Huh. I feel Where's... like I, I gotta. I, I might have opened some floodgates with that. Just for, There's for, a white dog. Just, I guess he's near the end. For inn. the people who were concerned, um, I have not yet watched Rise of the Titans, the final movie in the Tales of Arcadia series. I'm not sure I want to because of all the stuff I've heard about it. Um, so I, I gave you like a very quick rundown of that this morning. It's um, also not well, it earlier in the afternoon. Uh, Wait, for those of you not in the know, uh, Tales of Arcadia is a series of series on Netflix that I've been broadly into for the last several years. Uh, it started with Troll Hunters, then we got Three Below, then we got Wizards, and then they were building up to this big movie where they were gonna, you know, give it an epic finale, wrap everything up. Um, and just for context, those shows were all, like, good. Like, they weren't flawless, but they were good. They were well written, they had good character stuff, the animation was nice, all that stuff. Uh... And it seems like they just fully beefed the ending. Like, they, they thought what they did was, like, a satisfying open-ended ending, but instead it literally undid everything that happened in the shows. That's rough. Thing. And, uh, it's just such an odd decision. People were, like, comparing it to the All a Dream ending because it's really similar. It's like, oh, it happened, but it didn't happen happen. Um, and it's just such a baffling writing decision, uh... That, like, I've seen a lot of the artists and writers who worked on the earlier series just being, like, on Twitter and Tumblr being like, yeah, so, so here's my headcanon for what the characters are up to if we ignore the movie. <laughs> and, like, I've, I've never <laughs> seen a show's own creative staff rebel against its canon like that. Mm. Oh, no. So we're getting, Scroll like, show-quality storyboard comics and, and stuff uh, oh, from, from right, the creators yeah, who are like, yeah, forget that, which is just weird. Sure. Blue, I think you're, like, right on top of Hitler. I think I am right on top of, of Whirlwind Village. Yep, oh, yeah, there go. it is. If you right. just paraglide down, you'll be there. Yep. Beautiful. At least you're leaving your horse in a habited area with grass it can eat. Can't just leave it on a beach. <laughs> She's bad. No! Oh, 
while we're back. I love that we we've only been doing this stream for an hour out of three days, and I already hate the speed run. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. No, who do we lose? Indigo uh -oh. dropped off the call. Uh, we lost Indigo. She'll be back. Yeah. There we go. Speak, spirit. <gasps> I think. Uh, hold on. I think we're being haunted. Ugh. Technical the ghost difficulties of, of Indigo's already. past and future. Indigo said. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you are. Huh. <laughs> Sorry, I got sucked back into the cyber realm for a minute there. Uh, <laughs> you derez. <laughs> <laughs> that is a track in the um, Tron Legacy movie, that, as scored by Daft Punk. Oh god, I need to rewatch that movie. It's surprisingly enjoyable. It's a fun. We we did a movie struck episode. On it, uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> surprisingly fun sci-fi romp if you don't take it too seriously. Like, there's no heavy. I uh, recently recorded a, a similar uh, genre of movie with um, Tim of Hello Future Me, an episode that'll be coming hey. out in a few weeks. Uh, and that movie has lots going on. And Tron Legacy does not really have that much going on, but it is very pretty to look at and fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So, um, where, where, where is the fun. dog in this town? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. I have no idea. I only know that the dogs are in the towns. Uh, I do not know. I think he's at kind of by like the entrance on the other side, though, if I remember correctly from the last time I played this game. Oh no! I I thought the, he was the down. The list I'm working on just shows what like stable. The... I think. He... You know where you like find the guy, the bedding guy. I think he's near there. Yeah, I think he's on the. Uh, oh wait, he's right on there, the other right side there. Of... Oh. He's right Hello, there. Hello, Mr. Dog. Yes! Good boy, are you there? Yeah, he's there. Aha! Shadow pup. Woo! Beautiful. Okay. That's another check mark. Baby dog spotted. Would you like a little piece of a pull and peel Beautiful. Twizzler? No, I'm okay. Thank you, love. I don't like normal <laughs> Twizzlers, but I really like the pull and peel Twizzlers. Oh my it's god. It's about active destruction implicit in the Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I also have like very strong candy opinions. Like mini M and M's are my favorite M and M's because they have a better candy coating to chocolate ratio in my mind. Mm. I like them because you can get them in a tube and then just basically down it like a shot. Oh yeah, no, that's pretty great too. <laughs> Interesting. Alrighty. Feeding the dog to see what secrets he's got it. that he's gonna All leave right. us. We're creeping up on 4K. I wish wow. the progress bar showed us, like, a, a, a lower granularity. Because, you know, right now it's just been showing us 3.9K, even as people have been creeping up closer uh, to 4K. Dog, dog. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> oh, yeah, look, there's the, there's the chest. Nope. nope, don't explode it. Uh, someone asked about my Skittle preferences. Uh, I like all of them, but mostly the yellow ones. Yellow is my favorite flavor of most candy. Ah, oh, red is mine. Which that, is on uh, brand now that I think about yeah. it. Star fragment, yo. All right. The really sour like Skittles some... are the best kind of Skittles, and I am not accepting alternate opinions. If they don't make okay. your mouth hurt, why is it not worth it? I mean, the glass adds flavor. Yeah, I was going to say, I like sour <laughs> Skittles, but sometimes I just don't have the energy to feel like there's shards in my face. That's fair. I do like sour stuff, but I tend to go for, like, sour baked goods, like lemon bars or, you know, hmm. lemon tarts and stuff. But for candy, I I mean, I really like Starburst, and I will eat any Starburst, but I really like the red ones, especially because nobody else does. Because what really? I think is that there's... Well, here's are the you? thing. As I understand huh. it, there are, there are enough, like, medicines with artificial cherry flavor yes. in them that, like, a lot of kids just associate that flavor with being sick and having to drink some gross-tasting thing and, mm. you know... So, so they just end up hating it on principles. The same thing happens with artificial grape flavor, another thing that I really like. And, like, you know, when I was little, we had, like, that grape-flavored drinkable Tylenol, and I thought it was delicious. Yeah. So, I was going to say, you probably didn't have to take a lot of random medicines as a child. For me, so I can't much, have no. anything artificial bubblegum flavored. Hey, we hit 4K. Nice. 4K! Pink sport. Okay. Uh, Blue, your next location. Uh, so you're going to head due west yep. to the... Lakeside stable, the one that's like in the middle of the forest, and it's always got the lightning. And oh, you can the, bring yeah. your horse with you. I, yeah, the horse is on that cliff. I'm gonna need to get another one. Why well, not just bring it back? Well, but I, I, I you, you can't. Um... So, for instance, if I, yeah, it seems Rusty Man can't hear my call. What what cliff is it on? Uh, way far that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of worthless horse can't even teleport? Oh. <laughs> 
poor horsey. Uh, if they don't subscribe to the Skyrim school of horses, then I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> that horse should be able to to walk vertically up a cliff, or it's not worth my time. Ha, huh, Chad bringing up Generator Rex. That's a blast. Oh from man, the that is a yeah. throwback. Yeah, it it was one of those like it was like the unpopular younger sibling to Ben Ten because they yes. were about contemporary and they had a couple crossovers, but it was very much like, oh cool, Ben Ten's here and who's this other guy? I don't know, he turns into a robot yeah. or something. <laughs> Robo yeah. bro. Yeah. There was a whole slate of like Cartoon Network shows that had identical protagonists. And it was oh my god. Ben Ten and the Engine Generator Rex. Yeah, Actually, it was really was a funny. Third one who is, was that when Symbiotic Titan was coming out too? Symbiotic Titan they, did not have identical protagonists. It did they, not, but the one dude who has the mullet does kind of look like Kevin Eleven, so they were sort yeah. of on, they were on the uh, cusp there. Wait, Kevin, like Kevin Eleven? Oh, you do not God. know yeah. Kevin Eleven? Damn it. <laughs> Wait, really? You, you didn't know? know about no! Kevin Eleven, one of the greatest characters ever. Was there fucking the Melvin 12 or some bullshit after that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there is Ben 10,000 in the future. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spell. There's a... Oh my god, there's I, I remember there's a bit in I think Alien Force where uh Gwen mentions that their their like cousin Ken is in trouble and Kevin's like, wait, I'm sorry, Ben, Gwen, and Ken Ten. This is fucking ridiculous. Did your parents like hate each other? And then Ben's like, I don't know, Kevin E eleven. It's just like, oh, they're allowed to be self aware now. <laughs> they're sixteen and edgy. Spicy. Yes. Oh god. But yeah, I watched a little Generator Rex. I don't think I really got it, but it was interesting. It was surprisingly post-apocalyptic. Um, yeah, it had all those fun tech. His, his arms turned into technology or whatever. That's yeah, all well, I remember about <laughs> because uh, at, Generator Rex. What I remember is that the premise of the world was that there had been a fucking nanite apocalypse. Everybody was infected mm. with nano machines that could randomly malfunction and turn them into a giant monster. And hmm. the main character, uh, Rex, I think, uh, had, like, a control nano machine. so he, he was technically infected, but he could, like, turn himself into cool shit, like robots and bikes, bikes and shit like that. So he would make his arms mm -hmm. into big, punchy things and, like, all that stuff. And then he would go and beat up the, uh, the bad nanites because he could turn them back into people. Uh, Apparently and, Kevin's uh, dad's name was Devin Levin. Ugh. Excellent. Okay. Technically speaking, that is only if you ignore the fact that it was later retconned that that was uh, a fake memory implanted, but for some reason. <laughs> oh, anyway. Why do I know that? Why do I know why that? Do I mean, there's sometimes, you know, when you watch the show as a kid, and so there, and there's certain facts about it that, like, stuck in your head, even though you haven't thought about that show in a very mm -hmm. long time. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of very similar experiences. Like, just the other day, I was sitting around thinking to myself, man, they really had a scene in uh, Beyblades where Moses sp split the Red Sea with a Beyblade. That's a real <laughs> thing that happened. That is a piece oh, of animation yeah. that you could Google. And I'm like, why do I remember that and literally nothing else about the show? Incredible. Where the heck is the stable mm -hmm. here? There are a whole bunch of... whole bunch of Zonai ruins. Oh, is it over there? It's over there. It's okay, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Blue, I like that you're taking such avant-garde routes to get from all of these locations because they have roads that, like, horses will automatically follow if you just get on them. Yeah, my horse is on the side of a cliff. That's the limiting factor. Yeah, but, like, the roads are still just dirt paths and the, Can like... Can you not get another horse if you have a horse out? No, I'll, I'll, I'll get another horse as soon as I see one. No, like, I thought you couldn't get one if you already had a horse that was out. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, maybe. My game knowledge is actually quite limited, <laughs> all told. Oh my gosh. I thought this would oh, be like Chad. easy and chill and fun. It is easy I'm gonna go back chill. to only streaming Assassin's Creed Odyssey by myself. No, <laughs> come on. Oh. We're we're gonna we're gonna throw back actually no, I don't need you. Where's the dog? dog? The dog is by the stable, I think. Yeah. Oh man. Let's see. Ugh. Red, what other pieces of media have both of us? I spent far too much time thinking about. <laughs> it depends. Have you watched Transformers Prime? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Aww. <laughs> I mean, you should. It's quite fun. Uh, do you want me to sell you on it? <laughs> if I say no, will that matter? <laughs> yeah, I can find a different show. Maybe something we've no, no, no. actually been watching. Give, us, give us the Transformers pitch, Red. Okay. We've, we've, okay. already, we've explored so many avenues on this, this stream. Why not open this All one up right. as well? <laughs> well, okay. Oh, hey. Here's... Found oh, a dragon. Oh. <laughs> it's because we sought out Impa. Hey, Farash. I don't need you this time. I'm here for the dogs. <laughs> oh, incredible. 
Um, but yes, well, uh, so as you all probably know, there have been many, many animated Transformers shows, uh, starting really? with the original one. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, I know. Uh, almost like people keep rebooting the toy commercial so that they can make their toys. Uh, but, uh, so there was the original one, and then there have been a whole bunch of others, and I have only watched one of them, which is why I'm being so vague about these. Uh, and the one I watched is Transformers Prime, which came out in, like, 2014, I want to say. As an Optimus? Uh, hmm? Optimus oh, Prime? Uh, uh, yes, as in Optimus Prime. Uh, uh, but also as in the uh, the lineage of Primes, which is a thing, I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of Transformers deep lore. I don't know. I do know that the wiki is pretty hilarious. Uh, the image yeah. captions are always very snarky. It's it's clearly run by, like, one guy. Uh. I don't know. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, Transformers Prime, it's, it's 3D animated. I've seen people describe it as kind of like if the Michael Bay Transformers movies were, like, good. Uh... It's got a similar sort of, like, dark complete. tone, and the, the characters have similar designs, but significantly streamlined, so they're not so over-designed, and, and they actually kind of have some visual coherence and all that stuff. Uh, the all right, one thing uh, that Indigo, I where are we going next? Yes, where are oh, we going? Blue, thank you for tuning back in. Hi, this is, uh, this is Traffic and Directions on the 4 with your host, Indigo, so we're going to be having you head on over to our fourth stop that... Ignoring the fact that we did skip number one, Hateno Village, and we're circling back around to that, we're going to be going to the Highland Stable next. So you're going to want to head due west, uh, cool. a little bit that. more inland. You're going to be kind of in between the forest of Farron and this like cliff that separates it from the sea. So just sort of yeah, head okay. west. Yeah. I've made myself a sandwich, and I'm not hey, eating nice. a sandwich, which Excellent. is why you don't hear me crouching. <laughs> 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 Whew. Alrighty. Um but yeah, uh, it's a Somebody good show. The one thing that is a little dubious is that it's got human characters and they are weird looking. Yeah. Like they didn't go, <laughs> they didn't do it like realistic, which is probably fair. But the way they're stylized is a little bit wacky. Um, it's not terrible, but like the, the robots are clearly what you're supposed to be looking at. Um, I would hope so. Yeah, and it's good. It's got probably my favorite version of the uh, Optimus Megatron murder soulmate situation, which is always oh. fun. Uh, and Starscream is great. He's voiced by Steve Blum, who's just always delightful. Uh, but like with Starscream, because Starscream is normally voiced by, um, oh damn it, uh, to uh, oh, Michael he voices Bay. SpongeBob. I don't know. Hmm? Oh, wait. Oh, what's his name? Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. Yeah, yes. Tom Kenny. Yes, because I my brain was like Tom Felton, and I was like, that's fucking wrong. <laughs> No, Tom Could Kenny, you he's imagine like, oh, <laughs> Draco with Stars? Yeah, wait, oh, Brett, who did you say? Ah, what? Megatron will hear of this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, but, uh, no, so... Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, so normally Starscream is voiced by Tom Kenny, so he's got kind of this high, wait, wait. shrill voice. But Steve Blum has, like, this really, like, buzzing, menacing, like, yeah. low... And he just sounds great as Starscream. It's great. He's probably right. my favorite part charge. of the show. Indigo's in charge. I'm getting a snack. Indigo's in oh, charge? Why am I not what? in charge? <laughs> well, if I'm in charge, we're going to talk oh. about the 2008 live action Speed Racer movie for the next 30 seconds. So, if, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's one of the greatest cinematic masterpieces of our time, and critics were not kind to it when it came out, but it is like an impressionist painting put to screen. Now, if you're watching it, you may be thinking to yourself, Indigo, that sounds pretentious as shit for something that is about fa fast cars that go fast. And to that I say, you're absolutely correct, and the movie is aware of that, which is why, which is why, there are scenes where such beautiful moments as uh, Racer X punching a driver of another car while both cars are still moving happens. And I highly recommend that everyone go and watch it. I mean, it. It's not is that not everyone's commute internet. to work? <laughs> uh, it's incredible. It's what I wish my commute to work was like. But uh, no, if you, if you give me control of this screen, we're going to just chuck. <laughs> um, what I love about but... uh, what, what I watched that movie is that uh, the, the opening is like a flashback to, to yes. Speed's childhood. And I was like, yes. oh, it's so colorful and oversaturated because it's remembering the good times. And then I was nope. like, oh, the whole movie is going to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and I, honestly, a lot of people give it uh, a lot of flack for it being a very overwhelming visual movie, but I think that the special effects and visual design are actually very finely tuned, where if you are watching it, although it has a lot of color and a lot of flashing lights, and it may not be great if you uh, have any sort of issue with flashing lights, um, it, all of it is designed in such a way where there's like a very tight color theory and a tight palette. It's just extremely saturated. So like, it doesn't look bad. It actually looks very, very good, but it is very colorful and bright, which is a stark difference from how a lot of movies are shot and designed 
especially these days where the MO seems to be various shades of blue and gray with sometimes an orange light. I was going to say, sometimes you get blue and orange. (laughs) Yeah, you got to do blue and orange. Have you not watched Mad Max Fury Road? (laughs) (laughs) Another very pretty film with a very different uh, aesthetic as far as cars are concerned. But no, I highly recommend everyone go watch the 2008 live action Speed Racer movie as scored by my boy Mikey G and also uh, directed by the Wachowskis the same team behind Jupiter Ascending a movie I was that, gonna um... say Mike Wachowski <laughs> anyway this is why I do not trust any sequel series done by the same crew because mm-hmm. just because they did something good once doesn't mean they will make something good every time that's why I'm, I'm, I'm always worried I'm always withholding judgment until I see it and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's Jupiter Ascending Hello, uh, Pepper. For more of Red and I's thoughts on Jupiter Ascending, go check Hello, out the Pepper. Movie Struck episode. Do I have to? Do I have if to feed it? we open that can of worms, we'll be there forever. Because oh, I made him dog. get a heart, but I don't know if I have to feed yeah, him. Yeah, we need the apples. Ah, uh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'm driving now, so prepare for a lot of death. Wee. Feed that dog. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> pet that bump. I can't pet him, but I can spin around in circles and make him. What happy. do you mean you can't pet him? You can't pet the dog. What? There's no petting. Yeah, you there. there. You can't pet this. This is outrageous. Did you not know this? <laughs> no. How would I know that? <laughs> We've played this game a lot. <laughs> Have we ever tried to pet the dogs before? I think so. Mm. Unfortunately, there is no dog petting UI in the game, but you can. This see is some why. Treats. This is why Twilight Princess is the superior Zelda game, wherein not only can you pet animals, but you can also pick them up and carry them like babies. I I still think we should get Squyward scored. (laughs) I mean, we can, but like... Why did you say that like a psychic from Long Island? Squyward scored? (laughs) Is this- is the chest here? Pup? Pup? Pull up uh, up my nieces. show you. I'm trying. I forgot. There we go. Oh yeah, you're right. Thanks, Pupper. Don't, don't get too close. I don't want to hit you. I don't want to hit you. The other good thing about Twilight Princess is that you can also be a dog, and then you can talk to all the dogs. Ah! Mm. All right. It's Long the perfect back. dog yeah. game. I'm having fun. Right. Beeple! Hello. What? One more, and then we trade back. Do you want to play? You can play. I, I mean, kind of. Oh, then, yeah, sure. Here you go. <laughs> I was just trying to give you a snack break. No, I mean, I, I, I took my snack break. <laughs> you could also pick a, a media that, uh, rant about. Can join the party. Oh, yeah. I can make a media to rant about. I don't. I don't yeah. really do a lot of media. Where are we going next? Um, actually, oh. real quick. <laughs> well, that's not true. I do. I do media, but it's not like rantable media. Most of my like unpopular opinions are around food. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we heading? Uh. Oh well, welcome back to uh, Traffic on the Floor with Indigo, where we're going to give you the next dog location. So we kind of got a bit of a split in the road here. We have two options. I think I'm going to stick with the order that the dog rush is listed in. So we're going to go to number five. Which yeah, does require horse. us to head west to the Gerudo Desert oh, area. Okay. Um, we kind of got to hit five and six both at the same time. It's the Karakara Bazaar and Gerudo Canyon Stable. They're right next to each other. One is just further into the sand. So if you want to either go literally directly west and have to do a bit of climbing, or you can hit a horse, take the road, and kind of go the Circumbetis route uh, around the plateau. Way ahead of you. We're going to warp to the Great Plateau and go from there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am sorry. Did I see someone in the chat actually say that Jupiter Ascending is a good movie? So, oh no. <laughs> someone asked for my thoughts on Dorito chips, which is somehow uh, less controversial. <laughs> the person in chat who says Indigo is a great tour guide voice, it's because I worked as a tour guide for four years. Oh, that's hey. a new. So did I. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I guess I only had three. Well, no. I kind of did. I kind of did tours when I worked for the grad office. Yeah, I gave tours of the uh, comm building. I am very good. I uh, actually, <laughs> I um, I used to give tours for parents of prospective students at a university that will go unnamed. And uh, while I was doing so, we had a famous alumni come, and I um, may have severely embarrassed myself by slipping and falling on my ass while making eye contact with said famous <laughs> alumni. <laughs> Uh, and I then proceeded to tell that story on every single tour for the next four years. And parents loved it. See. So that's, if you want to, if you want to make parents of college students love you, tell them about a time that you truly embarrassed yourself while at the institution that you are trying to convince them to send their children to. See, most of my mm-hmm. stories for parents was just like a lot of bad dad jokes. Uh, 
and about how many coffee shops we had on campus. Mm. Uh, oh, fantastic. Parents were always like, ooh, I could use a cup of coffee. And I'm like, well, you can go here, 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 here. Or if you prefer this brand, you can go here, here, or here. Or if you want to take a little more walk, you can go here, 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 or here. One time uh, when I was on a, a tour, um, one of the, the parents asked the tour guide, uh, with with increasing specificity and uh, and intensity, uh, what his SAT score was. Oh, that was. happened to me all the time. People are like, "What are your SAT scores?" I'm like, "I I assure you, I don't remember," which is a lie. I entirely remember. This was very important oh, me to me for an extended period of my life. However, I'm not gonna tell you. I uh, I didn't do that many college tours, and I, I was never a tour guide. But as I recall, at one point. I was on a college walking tour with my dad at Princeton, and the only thing I was talking about is I was quietly pointing out to my dad all the buildings I could climb on yep. the outside. <laughs> and he was like, is this how you see the world? I was like, is this not how anyone else does? <laughs> uh, see, yeah. It's, just, it's all this old Gothic architecture covered in vines and like gargoyles and shit. It's eminently climbable. So many of those roofs are just waiting to be sat on. See, a lot of my problems with it being a tour guide is well, so the campus that we toured, we had, like, two very specific routes. And I usually did one, but I could do both of them. The problem is, if you had someone who needed an accessible route, either because of a wheelchair or a stroller or any sort of wheeled device, you had to actually take a different route. And the problem with parents on tours, if multiple tours go out at the same time, parents will sometimes just, like, choose to go with someone they weren't assigned to. So uh, there was an instance where... We were very busy, and we had all our tours assigned, and there were people who couldn't get on tours because they showed up day of. My favorite is when people are like, I can't believe you can't accommodate me. I'm like, well, you could have signed up like everyone else, but you didn't, so that's not my fault. Mm. So we, we start walking, and I'm giving my tour, giving my tour, giving my tour, and we get to one of the buildings where you don't go in if you have a wheeled device because it is not... There is an accessible entrance, but it is not the one we use. Oh, that's rough, buddy. Um, I really thought I could cross that. Uh, so anyway, I'm like going on the tour and I'm like talking, talking to a little group in front and like we start to go up the stairs and someone in the back raised their hand. They're like, excuse me. I'm like, yes. They're like, where's the ramp for my stroller? I'm like, first of all, there were no strollers in the room. So you were not assigned to my tour. Second of all, uh, there is no ramp for your stroller. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and they're like, it's okay, we'll just fold it up and walk. So then we had to stand there while waiting for this parent who was not assigned to my tour and was not assigned to any tour because we go into the room where all the parents are. So we, we, we will see you if you have a stroller and make accommodations for that. Uh, we all had to wait like 10 minutes as this person tried really hard to fold up their stroller and then another 10 minutes at the end of this one building that probably is like a one minute walk uh, for them to reset up their stroller. And that was probably the most awkward tour I ever had. <laughs> my condolences it was fine <laughs> i got this paid I'm glad I've ne <laughs> well that's good this is why i'm glad i've never worked in a customer service job mm -hmm. i mean we read you youtube comments really it's not the same but it is close <laughs> oh yeah yeah well <clears throat> but you know the youtube comments like we can block people and they don't know <laughs> whereas if you try and do that if you're like working at a coffee shop i mean that that's totally so fair but like in terms yeah, of like yeah, volume yeah. of stupid to process on a daily basis like i true it, true it is definitely a different league but it is a a similar core experience i will say i worked yeah, at yeah. a i worked in a restaurant and people are dumb <laughs> i was a oh, server yeah. and like i wasn't a server at like a nice restaurant i was a server at tgi fridays so like <laughs> lower your expectations it was <laughs> it was actually my second part-time job at the time so like you know i was just doing this on the side and I'll never remember, like, I'll, I'll never forget, there was this one guy who we had, and people ask for all sorts of dumb things at restaurants and just assume that, like, you should know exactly how they want them, despite it not being a thing. And at the time, I was barely 18. So, like, I knew about most common drinks, but I couldn't tell you what was in every single cocktail. And this one person orders, uh, well, they called it a... Jack of Sevens? Yeah, was Jack it? of Sevens. And I'm like, I'm sorry. What? what? And he's like, a jack of sevens. I'm like, I'm not sure how to make that. He's like, how do you not know? It's such a common drink. And like, I'm like, okay, I'll go tell the bartender. I go tell the bartender. And he walks over. He's like, 
That's not a fucking drink. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the guy wanted Jack Daniels in 7-Up and decided it was called a Jack of Sevens and everyone should know what it was. Uh, All so. right, I don't know much about alcohol because I don't like it, but that sounds like it would be gross, right? Yeah, I do know a little bit more about alcohol and I wouldn't want to drink that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually probably super disgusting. I, I, will say, I would willingly drink 7-Up. And again, days. like, this is a TGI Friday. I'm, it's not a cocktail bar. Like, we were just one of the three places in town that had a liquor license, so. I, okay, the one time in my life I ever went to a fancy cocktail party, I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do? And my cousin was like, if you don't know what to order, just, like, get a white Russian or something. It's pretty simple. And I was like, okay. And I went over, and I was like, I like white Russian. And they were like, what's that? And I was like, never mind. <laughs> and I just left. Because <laughs> it's like, I, I think it's milk and vodka, but why the fuck would I know? Yeah. We um we were at a wedding recently, and my cousin is just now old enough to drink, um, and so they had an open bar. And she was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get this drink and this drink." And the the bartenders at this wedding, uh, they poured every drink way too strong. Like I ordered a vodka cranberry, so where are we they going? Filled, I don't know. Lou, if you could pause for a moment and open your math up. You already uh, have. You're just a little delayed. I'm a few seconds behind. Alrighty. <laughs> Ayo. Oh, we're still running down a cliff, and now we're panting because we ran out of stamina, and then we're back up, and Link did the little hoo -ah hand motion. Okay, the map is open. Um, you are you're way behind. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm closer. I think your live thing might yeah, have started. Yeah, you, you might be a little behind on the live stream. Yep, I'm just going to refresh the live stream page and see if that helps, but you're, right, from the map view that I saw, you need to be heading a little bit more southwest. You're a little southwest. bit too northern right now. Okay. You uh, basically cool. want to be, like, right along the border where the mountain range sort of stops, because you're going to be heading right to the edge of the desert. Okay. <laughs> Is it in there? A couple people are telling their uh, favorite cocktails in the comments. But yeah, long story short, <laughs> this uh, bartender was pouring uh, about half alcohol. Which, like, At sounds least. like it would be fun to anyone who is, like, immediately in the college age, but let me tell you, it just tastes awful when you're, like, trying to drink responsibly at your cousin's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, suddenly... Oh, yeah, and then my cousin, who was barely old enough to drink, uh, did the same thing, and she was like, after, I'm like, how's, uh, how's that drink? She's like, it's a little strong. <laughs> 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 I'm like, yeah, go ask for a glass of cranberry juice and just, like, dilute it. <laughs> How do we get from colleges to cocktails? Customer service jobs. <laughs> yep. Also, that's not a very yeah. long jump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part, so I worked a lot of, like, sort of secretary or front desk positions all through college to kind of just, like, work around my class schedule. And I did a lot of those particular gigs in offices that were uh, for students and things to come and, like, meet with counselors and what have you. But a lot of times, parents would like to call in and because of some like HIPAA related thing, I legally could not tell them anything about what their child is doing. I think it's doing. FERPA, not HIPAA, but yes. Yeah, it's, it's same idea, same concept, different uh, different industry. And so a lot of my customer service voice was developed specifically as a way to get parents to think that I was uh, a pre-recorded message that if they did <laughs> that if they did not say the correct thing, the, uh, would That's not respond funny. how they wanted to. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we can't help you today. Please press one. <laughs> yes. My favorite, For I worked- more options, press pound. I, uh, <laughs> I did, uh, I worked in undergrad admissions, uh, but I also worked mm -hmm. in graduate admissions. And let me tell you, first of all, if you're applying to graduate school, do not bring your parents to tour with you. <laughs> oh, it's God. weird, especially if you're, like, not just out of college. Like, we had a 30-year-old <laughs> bring their parents to tour our grad oh, school no. with us, and we're like- um, that, that, that's, a, that's a tragedy in the making, I think. But what was even worse oh, yeah. was parents would sometimes call and be like, I want my child's grades. And that happened in undergrad admissions, and we're like, first of all, we're at the admissions office, and second of all, is your child 18? Okay, cool. They're not going to tell you, but I'd be happy to transfer you to the yeah. department so they can tell you that explicitly. Um, but Oh, I died of cold. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Oh, fuck. Um, that explains why chat was saying, blue ice! <laughs> yeah. Blue, eat food! <laughs> Well, thank you, chat. Your warning comes too late. It's all right. But yeah, uh, so parents would call the grad school admissions office and be like, excuse me, I'd like to check my child's grades or even like, I'd like to check the status of my child's application. We're like, oh, God, I'm back here. No. no. We're like, uh, ma'am, your child is 25. Uh, we're, 
I don't think you're even paying for his education at this point. Like, <laughs> oh god. So you must. So that's fun. You must have been dealing with a lot of those helicopter parent types. Yeah, more so in undergrad admissions than graduate admissions. But well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'd still get some of them in graduate school, and you're like, ma'am, your child's getting their master's degree. You need to let them breathe. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't actually know how whistle sprinting works. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Point Crow makes this look so easy. I know. <laughs> to be fair, this is Point Crow's job. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a professional. I'm just saying he does make it look very That's easy. True. I was like, wow, I had no idea Breath of the Wild was this broken, and now it's like, oh, okay. I, I see. Know, it's he's actually a fairly normal game. Does. It's uh, actually yeah. a fairly normal game when you're a plebeian. <laughs> Someone asked if any of us were in grad school at the moment. No. No, I've no, been no. to grad school. Uh, <laughs> did been there, done that. Probably will go back at some point because I hate myself. But mm-hmm. I'll probably go to get mm-hmm. my pharmacy degree. Uh, but that's I really a way want in the people future. who have to call me doctor, but I don't want to do the writing required to get a PhD. Yeah. So, so in- <laughs> you need to get like a professional PhD. They take well, that's the thing. Time. So I, I did undergrad. Uh, I have two bachelors. One is in film and TV production. Okay, we're not really going to do anything you know, more school for that. And the other was in Chinese language and lit. So theoretically, if I were going for a PhD, I would probably be doing it in like East Asian studies or something related to that. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, while fun and interesting, not super helpful in my current career path. So it would yeah, be a lot of time and effort <laughs> for uh, a cool title to put on resumes, you know? Well, yeah, I, I, so I studied engineering. You guys all know this, but chat might not. Right. Um, so I studied biomedical engineering and somehow found my way into a chemist job, which is event, which is what I realized halfway through my degree I wanted to do, but there was no point in changing at that point. Um, so now I'm like, well, if I go back to school, I might do a pharmacy degree, and that would be really fun. But the problem is, pharmacy school is hell. Not as hell as med school, but it's still oh, pretty hell. Yeah. And it, depending on the program, they sometimes make you apply in as, like, a direct entry thing, which means they decide where they're going to put you, be it the first year or the first professional year or just, like, the beginning of undergrad. Uh, and I'm like, you know, I've got a job. It pays well. I'm happy here. I'm not going back to undergrad, so. <laughs> Any advice for the dog. GREs? Dog. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Find that dog. Dog! Find that good boy. Woo! Wayo. Yeah, I think my alternate plan is to just work on some media property that gets me enough of a rep that people start just giving me honorary degrees right? and things. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Um, no, do it. Do it. What you need to do is like invent something that only you can do, so you become like the mm-hmm. go-to, uh, or or just get so <laughs> good at it that you're the go-to. It's like um, oh god, it's uh okay. Everyone here has at least heard of the slow mo guys, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Gavin is like, I guess, basically the best slow mo film person in the UK. Wow. And part of the reason why he like got his work visa and came to work for Rooster Teeth is because he was so exhausted from doing all these incredibly cool like yeah. movie things and like filming uh, Sherlock Holmes to a Game of Shadows and like he was like, I'm gonna go somewhere where I can just be the funny Minecraft man. That's <laughs> honestly such a mood. Time. Yeah. But, like, the way they did that is they were like, okay, how can I get a work visa? I don't apply for any of these, but maybe if I become famous enough. <laughs> so then they made the Slow Mo Guys YouTube channel, and they were like, we're just going to do what we normally do, but for dumb shit. And it yeah. worked. So <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. that's that's yeah. a big mood. My, my main goal yeah. is I want to have a job that, like, we can move anywhere, and I can do it. And, like, there are scientists in a lot of places. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> not, not everywhere. And also, I'm sorely yeah. limited by the fact that I can only speak two languages, and one of them I cannot speak out loud because my accent is horrible, as Red knows, because I <laughs> showed her it on a Friday. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You showed me your French accent, and I don't speak French, so I couldn't judge if it was bad or not. <laughs> For any of you French speakers out there, I learned French from two separate teachers, one from Paris, one from Quebec. Uh, so if, if you're familiar with the French language, you will know those accents don't mesh. Uh, so I don't speak French. I can read French. I can write French. I cannot speak it. I don't speak any French, and for most of my life, I thought that we was pronounced oi, so I'm a... So- <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, Capitan. I'd only, ever, I'd only ever heard it said or seen it written. <laughs> Never at the same time. <laughs> I... Oh, man. I don't know. When I was language learning, uh, like in middle and high school, I... 
I didn't even realize I was doing this. I was like basically imitating the teacher's voice, um, which is, you know, perhaps unsurprisingly a thing that I do as a semi voice actor these days. That, that was what I started off by doing, by doing like imitations of stuff. So I just picked up their accents and I didn't realize that was weird until I started paying attention to how my classmates were talking. And it was like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yo Soy Evan Day Chicago, and I'm like, hmm, all right, that, uh, <laughs> all right, that doesn't sound right, but, but you know, that that's how it goes. You, you, everyone learns it differently. I just, for me, the accent was bundled with the way I was learning the language, so mm -hmm. I ended up just absorbing it from my two different Spanish teachers, and then later my Japanese teacher. Uh, just imagining which... Yo Soy Azul de Sevilla. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Blue, I don't know if you rectified this. Uh, I'm a little behind on the stream, but uh, you were dying of heat a yep. minute ago. We're yeah, in don't the worry about now. it. That's uh, that's old hat. Um, okay. <laughs> the dog is taking a nap. Um, Not but yeah, I Blue and I have very opposite French problems. I have good French vocabulary, but a terrible accent. Blue's accent sounds like something out of a textbook. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. <laughs> we are going to try. My vocabulary is not very great yeah. because the last time I took French was in uh, sixth grade, uh, uh, middle school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. People don't automatically pronounce the pronunciation or match the pronunciation of the teacher. Some of us do, and that is my problem exactly. <laughs> See, the problem is I, I tried to do that, but I also had been brain poisoned by anime, so I ran the risk of getting a little stone in sounding when I started speaking <laughs> Japanese <laughs> um, and using the wrong pronouns without knowing because I was an ignorant weeaboo. <laughs> oh man! Uh, my teacher was so polite, but I know she was judging me. Oh yeah, uh, See, we had like almost the opposite problem. So I, I've been I studied Mandarin for like years and years and years, and I started in middle school. And our uh, teacher really didn't want to do anything, so we would spend a lot of time watching uh, D dramas. And so a lot of people in the class could only really do super dramatic, over the top like lines. From, it's, it's basically just the equivalent of a K drama. Um, it's not great, but <laughs> that was where I got my start learning Mandarin. And so now I'm like, oh yes. Your eyes are as beautiful as the sun, or like a really dramatic slow mo falling scene plays before I can actually say anything. You know. <laughs> uh, okay, Indigo, where are we going to next? Yeah, welcome back to Traffic on the Floor with Indigo. <laughs> so next up, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be heading up the map here, up into the Heber Mountain Range, where it's a little icy. So you may want to consider getting oh, yourself so some far. spicy potions, or maybe a Warm doublet, doublet. Yeah, Actually, where's your doublet? Yeah, let's let's get the double. Did you not get the double? No. <laughs> well, you're gonna want to go find yourself a doublet before you head up into those freezing cold Heaver Mountains for nine and ten, which are close to each other but also across from a giant chasm. So you're gonna have to do some gliding. <laughs> uh. Hooray! So I've been making tiny origami flowers. <laughs> That's what I've been doing recently. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Well, my thought process is we could put some on a wedding cake, possibly, which would be fun. Aww. Because I love the idea Aww. of flowers on cake, but sugar flowers are often hard to make. And regular flowers, I'm highly allergic. Uh, <laughs> so. Blue, I've made a mistake. I need you to tune back into traffic with Indigo, <laughs> because I forgot about number seven. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, you <laughs> That'll be yellow. Uh, there's actually Why don't we have yellow be the guy in the chair? <laughs> You think we can add him to the call? Is there still time to fetch him in? I, I don't uh, we're going to need to hit the outskirts stable, which is sort of like right at the base of the plateau uh, area. Um, okay. We can just kind of paraglide down to it. Yeah. I can't believe you guys are asking. The northwest. My... <laughs> uh, well, you know, let me, let me see. Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh, if I can what's free? Yellow. You into, uh, give me just but a what second. is free? Uh, Yellow is free. Yellow is free? I. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You want to jump with the call? <laughs> Let's yeah, go. For I think you can uh, add someone, give me, right? Give me a hot second. I think. Yeah, I right there. That uh, one. Yeah, right. Can you can, can you handle that for me? It's like uh, on the top, the little plus button. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yay! Hey, 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 we got yellow. <laughs> Thank goodness. The Dragon Rush crew grows. <laughs> Indigo, I gotta draw you an icon. At this point, it's everybody in the chat has an icon I drew except for you. Indigo does have an icon. Got an icon. Do it. No. <laughs> We're almost I'm sorry. at. I have been on this channel for over a year. <laughs> this you're, is you're true. Just, 
<laughs> you just gotta tell me, like, you know, do you want the cool cyberspace glasses or tron lines or whatever? All right, where is, uh, ooh, there's a chest over there. I'm gonna grab that. Ooh. Might be, there might be money. Or it might be or a, probably a weapon I can't use. Why not? Hey, look at that. Why weapon is it, I can use. Why can't you use a weapon? Because sometimes it's like, oh, your inventory's full because this game is like, the no inventory game. <laughs> Blue and Cyan should conduct an ancient Greek bull sacrifice in honor of Hera. You know, that would require us finding a bull, and we live in a city. <laughs> <laughs> Hera hasn't taken any of my calls in months. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, where uh, where are we going, Indigo? What's uh, give, give me the lowdown on traffic on the four again. We're seven. Here. Welcome, back to tra Welcome back to traffic on the four with Indigo, where we've got your uh, hot tips and where you need to go so if you haven't hit number seven which is of course as we all know the outskirts stable you're gonna want to sort of go to the uh northwest of the side of the plateau and just like paraglide straight on down there it's pretty close so you should be able to see it uh when you jump off i don't think that's northwest I think it's that's... it's west and it's it's elevated so i can paraglide okay yeah you think if it's steak and cooked it really well done that would constitute a sacrifice hmm. to a deity and then you could eat it I think, that would constitute a, oh, I think that would constitute a sacrifice of your own personal well-being to eat a steak that was cooked that well done. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, that's by far. <laughs> Actually, uh, we learn nothing from Yellow, while you're here, uh, could you introduce yourself to those of you who, who are not familiar? Uh, because most oh, people yeah. ought, ought, to, ought, to, ought to know what's up, but uh, for those who, are, uh, those who might be new. Yeah, uh, so I am Yellow, a friend of the channel and the sort of medieval slash Norse mythology consultant yep. for the channel. So, uh, I also do my own streams on the side, but uh, I think my first appearance here was the God of War stream. God of War streams, which, oh yeah. man, super excited for the next Good game. Time. But yeah, and check out uh, Yeah, well, I was going to say, what's your channel? channel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? I'm just going to put it in chat. I have a so. channel. No, uh, no uh, at, uh, I mean, yeah. you have a podcast. <laughs> Well, yes, you got, do you've, got, podcast, but... you've got movie struck and you also run our podcast. Um, God, these hey, streams okay. are so chaotic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, everyone, quick, plug your things. Red has a yeah, comic. Quick. Oh, God, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, shout out to the one person in chat who's been copy pasting the same. Hey, I've been reading your comic yeah. good thing every five minutes. <laughs> I see you. I appreciate you. Please don't spam even slowly. <laughs> oh, man. I have a job. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, real job. The most successful of all of us. I work a nine to five. That's my. That's my. Exciting. What a way to make a living. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ian, you and I have very similar like work weeks. I just also do. Yeah, the I know. <laughs> like Indigo <laughs> also works a nine to five. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun every time we. Oh. There's a. Yeah. Also, yeah. real quick, chat, okay. how are our levels? Uh, if yellow is too loud or quiet, uh, we can adjust him. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a little mic check here uh, on the five. Mic <laughs> check on the five. So if we could get yellow, could you just talk for us for a second? Well, hello. I am saying words in order to do a thing for reasons. I think Great, chat, chime loud. off if you uh, think that they're a little, little I, low. I little think little you might quiet, be I a think. smidge loud, but that's okay. That, that's adjustable. That says we're fine. Okay. okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Also, Matt is saying that yellow is quite quiet, so perhaps uh, we bump his levels up. Bump uh, yellow it should up. be in the <laughs> no, we got it. The ten and the three, if you're looking at the okay. DB chart. Um, I I was pointed out that I do have a cooking Instagram. That's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> I do do one of those. <laughs> They're closer uh, to an influencer than any of us. <laughs> that is false. I People are like, oh my gosh, what's your recipe? I'm like, bruh, I just mixed a bunch of stuff together and then stuffed it into pizza dough and steamed it like a bao bun. Don't take recipe advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, while we're doing audio checks, we're getting a lot of notes in the chat that indigo and yellow are the, the quietest audio streams so all right i don't know if you want to bump both of both of those up a, a tad. We go. also we're at four and a half k yeah we just did oh, all right what should we uh what incentive should we add for 5k uh what should we do if we hit 5k i don't know mm. we'll all discuss our favorite pizza toppings <laughs> you know <laughs> No, I can tell you guys about best dog saint because there is a saint who is a dog. Yes, what? that feels <laughs> off. Huh. Get to five k. Hear about dog saint. Yeah. 
Yellow, how have the, uh, the streams been going lately? Because last week we were able to pop in, you were doing the uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla Wrath of the Druids. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God, that, that was, was a time. That was a freaking mess. A full <laughs> nightmare. Tell me more, tell me Honestly, best depiction of medieval Ireland in a video game. Really? Oh, okay. Which is not a not praise of the game. There's a low bar to clear. There's not a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I hear rumors that the Frankia DLC launches next month. Oh. So Ooh. I'll be going back to it. Ooh. Oh boy, oh buddy. <laughs> but, no, there's a whole bunch of stuff, because I've been doing Civ games recently. Oh, that's fun. Uh, oh. So, for anyone, Chad, if you guys don't know, I my channel is all play video games and then ramble about the history, how they approach history, and sometimes other history, and mostly being bad at playing video games. Are you still playing Bioshock Infinite? Yeah, that should finish up on Wednesday. Nice. Ooh, yeah, when... I know, uh, but it's like that's the we've been doing it all month, so it's been a, it's been a while. But mm. yeah, I got an expert on American religion in the 19th century, uh, actually Ooh. on to that talk cool. about that. So it wasn't just me. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, uh -huh. Blue, do you need the next dog location? Uh, I'm going north, because I'd imagine uh, the idea that we skipped seven on our way to the Hebra Peak means that <laughs> next I should be going to the Hebra Peak. Yeah, uh, actually, you might want to hit the outskirt or wetland stable next, which is sort of at the base of the peak. So if you're at okay. Hebra Peak, yeah. um, it's sort of to the left of where you actually want to be. Yeah, it's you want to kind of slide right plateau. into that valley. Yeah, yeah, I remember that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do want to find another horse, though. So now that we're kind of in Hyrule Field for a while, a horse will be useful, but there aren't any nearby. You're a place where you can find the uh, royal horse, you know? Oh, that's true. But also, if you go to a stable, you can apparently summon your horse there? Nah, I think you have to be in master mode for that, don't you? I have really? No, no you, can just, you can just get your horse from oh! the stables. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be in master mode for that. Well, no, but like if your horse isn't at, like, boarded at a stable, I thought you had to... No, I'm pretty sure you can, that's how you can get it back if you like lose it. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's if you get too far away, it'll just you can just yeah. summon it. Yeah. Stable. All right, oh, well, that's nice. go back to the stable then. Get your horse back. <laughs> your poor horse who was left on a hill. Mm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say left. I would say um, <laughs> abandoned. Abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> despite my best interest. <laughs> Left in the swamp. <laughs> it's okay, he, he found his way back. We'll, we'll, we'll get our boy Rosinant. Rosinant. Can I chop down a tree with a hammer? No, but you can smack the apples off. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya. I did notice you fed the last dog jalapenos, which is... <laughs> Yeah, I killed I that listening. dog. <laughs> that feels cruel and unusual. I, I only had peppers, <laughs> which is why I'm currently apple farming right now. Peppers. <laughs> pep, 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 pep. <laughs> I had a friend with a cat named Pepper back before I had a cat and lived off of other people's cat stories. Um, and at one point she was like, yeah, sometimes to get our cat's attention, we go, Pepper, 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 Pepper. Pep, 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 pep. And the <laughs> Just turn into a dubstep song to summon a feline mm -hmm. to you. There you go. Where's Cleo? Cleo! She's underneath the chair over there. Cleo! Oh no, she's napping. Yeah, she's fully asleep. <laughs> uh, the ancient horse armor lets it warp to yourself, but yeah. you can always warp it to the... We do have the ancient horse armor in our other playthrough, but yeah. I feel like that's kind of mm -hmm. cheating. The whole, the whole joy of the speedrun is that we're at the very beginning of the game with nothing that makes our life easier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, joy. Yeah, dog mm -hmm. percent is a breeze mm -hmm. when you have the master cycle zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that's in the game. It's so dumb. Yes. That and the uh, chainsaw are my favorite. Yeah. Oh, God. But can Link do the Akira slide on it? Is oh, that like... that's an important question. Yeah, it's, I mean, there should be a button for that, let's be real. <laughs> right? I don't understand a lot about Akira, which I think is a pretty cold take at this point, but I do know that that bike slide is pretty damn cool. Oh yeah, hot take. Akira confusing, maybe? I did a whole hour-long podcast on Akira, and I still don't know what that movie is supposed yeah. to be about, so... We need a clickbait uh, video about it. We need a thumbnail with, like, a red circle around a random point of one of the shots from Akira, <laughs> and question marks all over it. 
I do really want that uh, uh, the red jacket that uh, Canada wears because it's just a cool look, man. What's with the girl yeah. staring at the tree over there? Uh, good question. Nothing that is oh, my problem. I think problem. she's the one who's waiting for the hero of legend or something. Oh, well, she'll, but she'll stay waiting. then she just, like, roasts you. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think we've been thinking about Kira all wrong. I think it's basically a feature-length episode of The Twilight Zone. <laughs> of the whole, Ooh. man, that shit's pretty fucked, am I right? I'm Rod Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what's the point of Akira? What's the lesson of Akira? I don't know. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Who the fuck knows? He turned into a big baby. I'm Rod Sterling. <laughs> I'd like to start, uh, I'd I'm launching a new Kickstarter where Red and I do our shitty Twilight Zone variants where at the end of every episode, we just go on and do our best Rod Sterling invitations and give you uh, the actual ending of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Monsters on Mayberry Street. On them some fucking aliens, boys. Look out for the sky. E.T.'s coming home. Yeah, crazy. I'm Rod Whoa. Sterling. I'm Rod Sterling. <laughs> 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 but are, how is uh, one ever really Rod Sterling? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will also say that I can confirm that reading the uh, manga for Akira does not, in fact, make the movie make more sense. Oh, good. good. <laughs> it, would, it would honestly be a shame if it did. I didn't, want to... Oh, I didn't right. want to take the time to read it after I oh, watched the movie, stretch. but I was like, I wonder if this would actually make this movie make sense. I'm oh, glad right. that it doesn't. Now I feel more not. justified in having not taken the extra time. Yeah, there's more drugs and nudity, but other than that, it's really just like, all right, uh -oh. I'm still confused. Uh, that. I don't know why he turns into a big baby. I don't think the so chat... So it's 90s anime. I'm trying to make Cleo <laughs> uh, purr into the microphone, but I don't think it's working. Oh, I don't think she's gonna do it. Come on, purr. Come here. Say hi. Say hi. Nope. Yeah, uh, we can we can Skyrim this. She's not in a very screamy mood today, so. I know. Just give her like two hours, and then she'll start screaming about dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. 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 <sighs> I've made uh, it back onto no the No, chat. I do not know Fate Stay Night. <laughs> the Fate franchise seems like a, like a, like a black hole. I don't want to cross the event horizon. Of. That, that's fair. You know? All it does is search way, to make uh, Google big searching historical anime versions of major harder. historical oh my God. figures lies. It, it does. Absolutely the worst. Look. I just, have I you guys been I exposed being to the terror of Attila the Hunt in no. Fate? Oh, God. I have not looked up Attila the Hunt, but I will say I was at one point at an anime convention. I was chilling in like a lobby area, and I looked across, and there was a big banner hanging on like the the side of the wall, and it had this uh, big titted anime girl in like a red jacket, and I believe it said Sir Francis Drake. And I was <laughs> like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh God. So, you know when you read something and you just like suddenly understand what psychic damage in D&D feels like. <laughs> That's yeah. one of those. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, oh, we're god. flying now, boys. <laughs> yeah, because your horse actually liked you. Yeah, yeah, and we're on an open field and not on the edge of a cliff at the edge of the coast. <laughs> Don't forget no, to give it flying. pats when it does good things. Yeah, happy happy horse. Whoop. Whoop. Uh, what percent of dogs are we at? Well... We have at least one dog. Seven. So seven dogs. <laughs> We're half. We're Wait, half. no, didn't we miss one? We got him. We saw a dog that we was didn't not get the listed dog. on oh, the. Come on, dude. Why so would you put that in the So technically, we have seen six dogs that we need to see and one bonus dog. Okay. So, uh, I think that's a win for us. <laughs> uh -oh, I am supposed not... to believe that this case of bridal yes. lingerie uh -oh. is. Conquered the okay. entire Mongol Empire? <laughs> no, just, just, you know, mostly Europe. Just sprint What the hell blue. is, like, is it, I mean, I can't or even not. make sense of how the fabric works. I nope. mean, hold on. It's terrible. It's exactly it as painful as it looks. Like butt wings, but they're fabric and they're pointing straight upward, even though she's also got a massive bridal veil that is not being displaced by any theoretical wind, so I but don't know our how they're doing that. But our butt's leg. <laughs> is butt leg? Uh, Why does her sword look like that? <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, the longer I look, the worse it gets. We're getting think closer. These anime designers get paid by the polygon. 
I think uh, I was at one point. I was at one point commissioned to draw a uh, fate character who I believe was supposed to be Quetzalcoatl, and uh, <laughs> <sighs> you know, sometimes you look at a character design and you're like, "Oh, that's cool," and then you sit down to draw it and you're like, "This motherfucker is the most overdesigned thing I've ever seen." Yeah. <laughs> Who needs this many fabric textures? Who needs this many belts? Um, yep. False. If you don't have at least seven belts, you're going to lose your pants. <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah. Numero approves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. the pants in this case are basically themselves just a belt. <laughs> <laughs> Strategically located. Is so, belt pants? <laughs> Topologically speaking, I think belt is skirt. <laughs> is belt skirt? In yeah, this case, yes. Belt could be skirt. <laughs> yeah. I or guess it's skirt belt. Several belts. Like, it's kind of like the, um, there was the skirt that someone had on in Robots, where it sort of just looks like it's a series of concentric rings. So you could make that with belts, theoretically, if you just had them all set to different sizes and you just kind of slowly stacked them on top of each other until you got to the smallest belt. Mm. Remember, friends, for our day job, we make videos about history and mythology. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> for my, no, my day there job, is fashion. I look at lungs. <laughs> Great. But yeah. for science. <laughs> yeah, but for science. Trust me, it's less weird in context. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyway. God, so, uh, it's only July and August has already been going on too long. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. No, come on, August is going to be fun. We're just traveling interstate, like, every weekend. <laughs> oh, chat brought up Soul Calibur. I'll say this for Soul Calibur. <laughs> I kind of respect that they have, like, a special, like... After you lose a round, your characters, like, half their clothes explode off. <laughs> like, it's strictly sim it simplifies the design extensively, and is also just such a funny thing to put in a goddamn fighting Apparently game. if you hold the shield button, the horse will kind of ignore the weird terrain. I don't huh. know how much I know. Oh, yeah, do, I know that. Do, 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 do. Where's this horse going? Oh. Alright, we're sort of on the right. We're going to the- to get the, um, the tower. Oh. Is this the tower? Yeah, the you, you're gonna oh, wanna, uh, nuts. skirt around the edge of these cliffs here. Oh, you're going to the tower. Skirt. I thought we'd evaded the fashion talk. <laughs> Red. <laughs> womp womp. Alright, where... Actually, I, I do not want to go to the tower. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, okay, well, welcome Probably back to Chavik on the floor with Indigo. If you are at the tower that I think you're at, you pretty much want to go due north from there. Uh, so if you want to follow the road again, you can probably find your way up there. Cool. I'm going down into the area with that all would, the weird tree thingies or that is the around? incorrect that is the opposite direction of where you want to be going so cool. if you sort of turn yourself you will notice at your compass in the uh bottom right hand corner there is a arrow pointing up for north you want to be walking towards that arrow sweet <laughs> got it mm -hmm. did you mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry i thought you meant the little yellow arrow arrow and i'm like you you do know that that, that us that we <laughs> <laughs> nope, you want that <laughs> incorrect have we ever played fire emblem uh, i actually really I like the fire emblem series so much oh. fire emblem. <laughs> <laughs> i know that red mains a fire emblem character in smash but i don't think that you have and correct me if i'm wrong i'm pretty sure you've never played a fire emblem game no i've played real chess before uh and that's already kind of boring so no, uh, uh, I, I enjoy. I've been playing place. Fire Emblem since uh, <laughs> Sacred Stones on the GBA, yeah, and so <laughs> yes, yeah, Seth I'll, is the I... best redhead in the Fire Emblem series. And if you think otherwise, you are wrong. We what? are Titania second place. Though. Is Titania in okay. second place though? Titania is a second place, but Seth is absolutely top tier. Like he's right. my man's, and he's never gonna be in Smash. But God, I wish they would open up the roster for him. Um, <laughs> The last thing we need in Smash yeah. is another one of them. <laughs> hey, but he has he has a horse, and therefore he it's does. completely different. He's the one that would of be those, so funny, um, actually. He's one of the mentor characters that will dunk on you for the entire game. Like it is impossible to kill Seth in that game. <laughs> he's wow, so a mentor powered. who's immune to dying. Crazy. Yeah, I um, know. Usually they like fall off halfway through, but he yeah. the fastest way to play Seth Stones is to just have Seth win the game. Yeah, you just send him out in front and have Seth take every hit and just, like, one-shot every other opponent in the game, and you're probably gonna be fine. <laughs> I love this because there are so many series where it's like, the mentor is so much more powerful than the hero. How do we explain why the hero has to do, you know, the, the plot instead of the mentor? Oh, maybe the mentor doesn't care. Oh, the mentor is sick. And in this case, they forgot to give the mentor a, oh, I can't possibly caveat. So it's just like, <laughs> get out of here, you Martha-likes. All we need is Seth. <laughs> 
Seth is my man's. Oh, love him. But yes, no, I've I've played a lot of the Fire Emblem games, and I think that they're a lot of fun, but they are also very much like <laughs> anime RPG games, so <laughs> they okay. fall into yep. a lot of the same problems that other anime RPG games fall into. Um, but they're still a good time, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just very glad that we made it to the next uh, to the next table. Well, I was about to go off in right. way the wrong Woo! direction, and I turned and looked, and I'm like, oh, wait, here it is. Here we go. We're good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then this after this next you... stable, I think that's going to be have to be where we end the stream, because I am tired. <laughs> All good. Oh, and right, we're, we're coming up on a nice even two hours in a little bit, so let's get this last, yeah. uh, this mm -hmm, last mm -hmm. uh, dog. Oh, do you need another one? Oh, my God. And let's see if we can hit 5K before we, uh, before we sign off for the night. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, for the chat asking which of the three houses and three houses do you side with, the correct answer is and always will be the gold deer fear the deer claude is the, the best deer. of the lords in that game <laughs> yes are those the blue exactly. ones or the red ones it's the yellow ones it's oh, the third option <laughs> right the, the only good choice you know that always bugs the only me only good know? choice and that annoys me when when a game gives you two shitty options and then later rolls out the only good option is dlc no no the, this, these were all no, they're not dlc it, really yeah. these were all at launch it's, yeah the game is called three houses so there's three houses oh. you can pick from in it Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this not the one where you are you're like thinking a, of Faye. Yeah, Am I you're the one where you're the dragon face. kid and you can either yeah, date face. your own adopted siblings or your own uh <laughs> Okay, cool. We have to cool, cool, about cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Three awesome. Houses is the most recent one where you're a teacher and then you date your students and it's weird, but you kind of just have to roll with it. You uh, know, yeah, Fire Emblem, there's a lot of reasons why it doesn't seem like my jam. Uh, the weird implications in every game is part of that. Also, it's like different weird shit every time. There's the whole, it's okay, we're not related by blood in that one game. And then there's the whole, no. it's okay, I'm your teacher, mm -hmm. but I'm basically as young as you. It's, uh, uh, it is I don't know. Strange. I don't know. Yeah, it's a fun game, but you can't you can't look at it too deeply, because as soon as you do, it falls apart. Yeah. Um so we got to see this dog, and then basically the next stable that we're going to is directly across the chasm from us, where we are now. Uh, this dog is... keeps eating my fruit, but is not showing me the treasure. It is Do you not have showing any meat enough. you could give him? Any what? Perhaps a juicy steak or a piece steak. of something? I don't know. I've, I don't know if a better treat would work. Hmm. Maybe a Hylian shroom? Try the peppers again. I did. <laughs> and a oh. watermelon. This is the Serene Stable, right? Yes. Okay, then he should be leading you to a gold ruby, but he is apparently not feeling it. Hmm, this dog seems like, uh, he's just trying to... <laughs> this dog's a scam. To, to, yeah, this uh, dog's a scam artist. Yeah. <laughs> For the low, low <laughs> price of... <laughs> oh, we are less than $100 away from Dog Saint. Oh, so Ooh. close. Ooh. <gasps> There's an item, um... Oh, it's a hammer. That's not helpful. Um... Oh, all right. And we're over. We've hit 5K. Hey -o. Thank you to the anonymous okay. who just donated $100. Let's hear about that wow. dog saint. Dog what? saint. So the story here uh, is recorded in a manuscript from about 1260 uh, when a Dominican friar decided that this was probably heresy and so recorded the story for the purposes of stamping it out. Yeah. But we're in southeastern France. This is a super localized saint known as Saint Guinefort. So the story goes, basically, uh, he was a greyhound belonging to the local lord. Oh my god, it's the wrong charged... dog. God damn it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was... uh, so. Sorry, continue. <laughs> yep. Guinefort was put in charge of the infant son when the lord and lady of the house went out. Upon returning, the uh, nurse saw blood around the dog's muzzle and the cradle so they uh thought that he killed the dog and or they killed that the dog killed the baby and so they killed the dog this terrible story uh but the baby was fine and in fact a snake had tried to kill the baby and the dog had killed the snake so super remorseful they bury the uh, they bury Guinefort. And immediately, miracles start cropping up left, right, and center on the grave mount. Ah. And so everyone goes like, oh, the dog is a saint. The dog saved the kid, actually a saint. <laughs> and so there's probably there's probably like 150 years here where it's Guinefort is uh, worse, 
venerated as a saint, and starts cropping up in other people's saints' lives. So, like, the official wow. patron saint of dogs gets lost in a forest, and the spirit of Saint Guinefort goes and bails out the patron saint of dogs. Oh, I love this. I love Ten out of ten. Oh, man. Excellent. I, you know, I, it's not quite the same, but I've been running into some pretty interesting uh, hoops all these monks had to jump through to, to justify some stuff. Uh, that, cause, that, yeah. <laughs> well, because, you know, of course, the, the folklore that people believe and the uh, canon that is officially not heresy frequently have very, very little in common. Um, yeah. And one thing that I ran into while I was researching historical werewolf lore is that every single time some monk sits down to try and explain werewolves, they always have to jump through some serious hoops to avoid committing a heresy. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's, a, there's a very funny one I ran into. Uh, well, okay. There's a, there's a few funny ones. But there's some interesting ones in, in terms of, like, mostly the monks are recounting stories they heard and then giving their opinions on it. Uh, and there's one, uh, one angle on the werewolves of Ossery, which are this, uh, recurring figure, uh, attested both by Christian monks and by, uh, a local Irish fitness of names, uh, as basically a lineage of people who could just turn into wolves sometimes. And the Irish one is like, yeah, th there was a dude, he could just do that, he was pretty cool. And of course the Christian one was, oh, they were sm smote by God for being such heathens and heretics, <laughs> and then they cursed to be badass wolf dudes, and oh, how terrible, and it's like, yeah, alright, alright, fine. The, the um, oldest attestation of them is actually in the Norse source. Yeah, um, uh, and the Norse one and the monk one, they, they both are like, the oh, Saint cursed! Pat St. Patrick super cursed them, because St. Yeah, yeah, Patrick exactly. is actually horrifying. Yeah, whereas in the fitness of names, it's like, yeah, there was this dude, Lug something, I think, and he, uh, he could turn into a wolf and so could all his kids. Neat. And then they just move on! <laughs> it's like, alright, cool. Um, <laughs> but there was one story, uh, that was recounted by a monk about a priest who ran into a, a wolf on the road, uh, who talked, like, could speak, and gave uh, appropriate Catholic answers to him when he asked him questions. And uh, basically the wolf was like, listen, uh, I've been cursed to be a wolf, no big, it's a thing, you know, it's divine punishment for how evil and heathen and Irish we are. Uh, but listen, my, my she-wolf partner, she's about to die, and she wanted to know if you could give her her last rites. And basically the, uh, the argument that the narrator is having is whether or not this is heretical. <laughs> because... <laughs> You can't the, treat animals like humans for the purposes of, like, baptisms and, and funeral rites. Uh, amusingly, this one actually already got solved and they just weren't looking in the right spot because there's also a uh -huh. dog-headed saint. Right, yeah, there's the saint right. who is a dog, but then there is a saint who has the head of a dog. Yep. And they had the whole that debate as to whether he could be a saint at all. Mm. When decide, trying to decide whether he should be a saint because he's yeah. not human. Right, yep. Echinocephalus then, is not a human, it's one of the Plinian races. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how they have all these arguments about, like, is this okay? I don't know. And the really funny thing is that whenever they end up tackling the werewolf question, they always struggle with the whole, is it possible to take a, a human made in God's image and uh, turn them into something below human? Is that is that possible? And uh, the answer they usually come to is, no, unless God says so, because, oh, God can do anything, and it would be heresy for me to say otherwise. <laughs> it's like, guys, oh my god. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But All by human solved. power, you can't do it, but miracles are miracles. They can do whatever the heck they want. And then for like a thousand years, the official canon was, it is fully impossible for anyone to do witchcraft. Okay. It's it's heretical to even imply it, because good Christians don't believe in witchcraft, because implicit in that right. belief is that it is possible to gain power from sources other than the big, you know, the big capital G God. Uh, and then, in the 1400s, one fucking guy who was like, oh, Judge Claude uh, uh, Frollo wishes he had what Heinrich Kramer had. True. Uh, one fucking guy who was literally just hung up on this woman in town who didn't like him and tried to get her killed yeah. uh, wrote the Malleus Maleficarum and scared people enough that the official doctrine flipped, well the, the official doctrine didn't flip, the church was like, uh, dude this is heresy, you, you gotta you, this is gonna hurt a lot of people, and he was like no, the witches must be burned <laughs> this new breed of witches are far more dangerous, you'll recognize them by how female they are, and it's yeah. like yeah, that sounds about right, and then they killed no. 40,000 people uh, Aquinas oh. did did say that witches probably did exist, so it was changing before then, but yeah, he went it, super yeah. overboard. It, it was like, there was always disagreement, because, you know, it's... Here's the problem. It is very, very effective to uh, keep a population in line through fear of a powerful external force, and 
this just pops up again. This, this recurs throughout history. If you have a population and you're trying to keep them to follow a doctrine, sometimes the easiest way to do that is to get them afraid of something that you say you can protect them from. And even though it was like, it was officially heretical to believe that, to, and, or to say that, or to preach that witches were real and should be killed, uh, fear-mongering does work, unfortunately, really well. So, uh, yep. when I learned about this in middle school, I could have killed that man with my bare hands. But, um... <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. But even the rest of the Inquisitors were all like, uh, what the hell, dude? <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, you know, it's, it's easy to be took, like, oh, like 50, everyone. Like 50 years for the Malayos to become an important text. Yeah. You, you know, the thing with this is, like, it's easy to look back at a historical time and think that the the one opinion that you've heard about it is the one that everybody had. You know, this is why I dismiss it every time someone's like, oh, it was a different time. Nobody knew that, you know, this p prejudice was bad. It's like, no, I assure you, there have always been people saying that this is bad. <laughs> The bar hasn't been raised over the years. People have always known that, hey, if you accuse someone of being a witch and give them no way to prove that they're not without killing them, you're going to kill a lot of innocent people. <laughs> people have been arguing that since the Malleus Maleficarum was written. In the 1700s, when it finally started dying down, a lot of people were like, you're just using this to target a lot of elderly widows. What the hell? <laughs> people have yep. always known that this is bullshit. It's just there's always been people who are susceptible to these easy, shitty opinions, and then they, they end up following them and it's bad it's very bad all right um, uh now that we're uh just swinging off of that uh indigo where am i going i have gotten myself <laughs> oh, to welcome the, back to, to the traffic the on the floor with indigo where we're going to direct you to your next location to spot your next dog so as you can see off in the distance there is a tower uh sort of near you you kind of want to go swing right on past that tower okay. up into the northeast there'll be a road right near the tower that should lead you directly to our tent stop which is of course the snowfield stable and that will be where we uh, where we cap the stream. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds that's great. about half the map, so that's a pretty good because uh, we'll swing around yeah. through the other half and have to do Terrytown. And then and Terrytown's going to take us a good amount of the third stream, I think. Yep. Yeah. Because like you know you you'll watch the video where Smallland does this in two hours, and you're like, oh, it's fine, it's easy, and then it's like, oh no, it's, this is this is very hard. I can't I can't really wind bomb all that great. I don't have a lot of stamina uh, for Link right now, and I also don't have. Um, let's see, uh, the ability to, uh, bullet time bounce, which is a major limiting factor. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, had to, uh, mute somebody, uh, spreading blatant plague misinformation in the chat. Oh, fun. Sorry, man, calling yourself a meme account doesn't actually excuse you from the ban hammer. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh, is it that one over there? Yeah. I think it's that one over there. Yes, you're pretty much going to go right past the tower, and then it should be sort of, like, in the snow yeah. field. Yeah. Sweet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right near it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, yeah, so that was my super fun witch hunter bad, Yay. actually, rant. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, it's, it's just interesting looking back at these, because, like, if even in the fucking 1400s, people were like, hey, I think this is bad and ignorant and actually and a lot of people are going to get hurt <laughs> then I, I i have no patience for when someone looks back at like the 1950s and is like well nobody knew racism was bad oh, yeah. it's like oh come on <laughs> people have been fighting that since the 1600s <laughs> oh way longer oh, than yeah. that i well, mean yes, but people, the, the, the american the concept version of race is far more complicated before then but even then yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it is part of the reason why like whenever i like go back through the uh the dark depths of the lovecraft video comment section and people uh, are like you don't understand it was a different time nobody knew it's like i assure you plenty of people knew that racism was bad and that lovecraft was a nut job even in the 1920s <laughs> believe it or not people still had brains back then and they could yeah. use them to pattern recognize <laughs> oh whatever uh oh hey there's uh there's dinray all up in the sky that's pretty cool Second dragon. We've seen uh, two dragons on this. <laughs> Remember how long it took us to see one dragon last time we played Breath of the Wild? Yeah, something about yeah. Uh, not doing the the one trigger that spawns the whole dragon thing uh, really gets in the way of that, doesn't it? Ugh. Mm. Ah, oh, boy. Yes, yeah, so and then I think Emma C. shouting out Name of the Rose. Name of the Rose is a great book. Mm. And uh, actually by a medievalist. Like, did legit scholarship. Hey, that's cool. Hope you like random uh, fruits, Mr. Dog. Because <laughs> I don't have any apples. I mean, 
Oh, also, it's a better eco, so also, you know, incredible anti-fascist, like, defining work on what fascism is. But, ah. great book. <laughs> Highly recommend Name of the Rose. I see peppers. Come on, Mr. Dog. Eat the fruit. <laughs> Dog. Consume. Oh, we got some of them anime sparkles. He's getting, he loves us. Take that tasty snack. Mm. No, the, la the last one. Eat, eat the Hylian shrew. Okay, fine. Uh, hmm. Oh, the boxes. Show us where the stuff is. Are there two dogs at the stable? Oh, uh, maybe. I think this is one of the stables with two dogs. Don't quote me on that. No. Uh, curses, indeed it is. One always tells the truth. The other dog always lies. <laughs> Man, this this whole two dogs thing is really getting me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold all these dogs. The answer to that riddle, just to ask them which one of you is lying, because the one who's telling the truth will have to say that I'm telling the truth, and the other one. Yep. Would but, it also? But say also that? Uh, only if you try to identify them. Sorry, hmm. chat. Real quick, uh, if we can, uh, long shot. If we can hit six k. Uh, then we'll just be dumping, you know, another 4K into it basically as soon as we get our stuff sorted out. So we will have officially hit our uh, goal for the stream. Nice. If you can mm -hmm. get us that high, so <laughs> you know, we might be able to. What's the, to... What's the reward there? If we get to 6K, will you draw uh, an indigo? <laughs> 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 hey, indigo, I'm gonna draw you one anyway. <laughs> that doesn't know that. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm gonna draw you one anyway, and it's gonna be great, and we're putting that on Twitter. No, we need to think of a better reward. Something else. Uh, mm -hmm. eh, mm -hmm. I, I got nothing, team. <laughs> uh, dog Saint was a pretty good one. I don't know how we can top that. Yeah, how do we top a dog that turned into a saint, and then the church had to decanonize it because it was technically heresy? <laughs> if you get to 6k, I'll come to the next stream with a uh, full analysis of Air Bud for you, if you want. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Indigo, that's Wednesday. That's so fast. You have work. <laughs> this could be work if somebody requested it for Movie Struck. <laughs> You're right. The, I've, I've created a podcast in which I can literally never uh, do any sort of hardcore producing for it because it's entirely based on the idea that the guest picks the movie. So people have been like, oh, when's the Movie Struck episode on sign? like. Oh? Everyone's favorite vacation story. That's a good one. Science mm. suggested everyone's favorite vacation story. I, I am, I'm stuck with these dogs here, and I am also dying, apparently. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> put, on your, put on your Dublé, my dude. He's I, got I, the Dublé on. Okay. You gotta go sit by the fire and warm is yourself there a, up. Is there a third dog There's somewhere? A, is there a third dog? Guard! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think of. Is there, a, is there a third one somehow? There is a third dog, and he's right here. God. <laughs> And now I'm gonna oh, die. We've, up. We've hit, we've hit five point four. Come on, nosh on some peppers. Now eat these Hylian shrooms. It's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is Link wearing hmm. pants? Yes, but like okay, barely. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, barely pants. I see how it is. Oh gosh, I'm gonna need to like you fast see? travel out <laughs> and come back <laughs> with apples. <laughs> Oh my god. I, yeah, I, I'm gonna need to fast travel out and come back. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, that gives us a little more time oh, to, no. to get this last $500 and, uh, and hit the 6k slash so 10k. Close. We're so Tactical close. Tactical stream extensions. Do it for oh. Air Bud. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Do it for the dog that played basketball. Yeah. It was basketball, right? I'm not misremembering that movie. Yeah, there, there's there no are so many talk. Air Bud movies. <laughs> really? There were huh. so many of them, right? Hold, hold on, I'm gonna Google Air Bud for us right now. Yeah, Air, yeah. Well, because there was the Air Buddies for sure. There's a, oh. there's Air Bud, Bud. There's Air Bud Golden Receiver in which he plays uh, football, the uh, American mm. football. Then there's oh. Air Bud World Pup, which I have to assume is soccer. Uh, <laughs> Air Bud Spikes Back. He played volleyball. Uh, that's for all of you who watched the Olympics volleyball match where they started playing the high cue music in the background. Uh, ah. Air Buddies, which came out in 2006, which is um, nine years after the original Air Bud came out, so they were making these movies for at least nine years. Wow. 
Okay, my, my, my tactical strategy here is we're going to go to Hateno because there are apples in Hateno, and we're going to get the other dog, and that's going to be the last dog for the stream because I'm, I'm right. really feeling wiped today. We, we're going to have to call this soon. It's all good. It's all good. We might be able to get that last just under $400 uh, dollars as we continue, but no disaster if we don't. You know, this was a pretty ambitious mm -hmm, goal mm -hmm, for a, mm -hmm. uh, a chill Sunday stream. Uh, let's see. Somebody didn't somebody ask about the Black Widow movie? Has anyone here seen it? Actually, nope. no. Okay, uh, it's on the list. I was like, I should either watch. I was like, I want to watch a you know fun, um, kind of actiony girl power movie, and then I watched Gunpowder Milkshake instead, and I think <laughs> that that was a good decision on my part. I agree. I here's the problem. I obviously I want to watch the movie because mm -hmm. I feel like I should. Like you know it. It's a Marvel movie. It's a mainline Marvel movie, technically speaking. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it feels important. And yet, here's the problem. I, I've said this on Twitter. If it's good, then they wasted this character for 10 years, and they only figured out how to write her after she was already safely dead. And if it's yep. bad, then they wasted her for 10 years, killed her off, and couldn't even give her a proper send-off. Neither of these are good options. I'm not going to be able to judge this movie impartially, because I'm just so mad at how they utterly failed to write this fairly simple character for over a decade and, like, a full dozen different writers and directors. This um, can't be hard. Nope. True. Real quick, Indigo, where is the dog in Hitano Village? Uh, it's sort of like in the back where like the lakes and stuff are. It's sort of like out of the way a little bit, but it's in Potato yeah. Village technically. Okay. That's said by the sheep ranch. Yeah, so if you go up that hill, it's sort of like in the back areas of the farms. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it might be up the hill more, like kind of towards the lab. Okay. Because that's where the sheep ranch is. Uh, it's like on yeah. the other side of that woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like my. My problem with the Black Beyond Widow movie and why I haven't watched it yet is I, I intend to because I consume so much media at this point that it feels like a cardinal sin for me not to see most of the movies that come out in any given month. But right. um, I got really burnt out on the MCU in general because so many of the movies are just so incredibly mediocre. Yeah, they're <laughs> and just And the ones okay. that are good are good because of other things, not because they're Marvel movies, because they're good at being other. Like, I love Spider-Man Homecoming because it's a really fun teen, like, coming-of-age story. Yeah. Uh, not because it, Spider-Man's in it, although, you know, I love Spider-Man, but that didn't that's make not really the movie for me. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is mini Tony Stark. True that. But, this uh, is, we already gave Tony an heir apparent in his daughter, and we're doing, <laughs> doing Ironheart later, but the real successor to Iron Man is fucking Spider-Man. The mm -hmm. archetypical broke millennial hero. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's... Hmm. Some of the mainline Marvel movies... That, like the the, the ensemble movies he, uh, I think you need to go higher up the hill still oh like God. there's a there's like a cattle ranch towards the, almost the very top where the lab is that I think that's where the dog is but uh yeah so many of the mainline like ensemble Whoa. Marvel movies are just so incredibly mediocre too on top of you know already having just uh, an over saturation uh, of them sorry what? we just got an anonymous $200 donation and cleared six on, uh, oh, 6k wow. look at that so, nice. thank go you team. so much yeah uh, let's go yeah. thank you so much i have to watch air bud now oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes i found uh, yeah. the sheets uh, yeah but no i, I know what you mean think if not true to our brands yeah but i know what you mean about with the mcu it's just like i Dog. i mean you know once they wrapped up infinity war as a storyline i was like all right, I'm good. I'm done. And they're like, no, no, no come back. Yeah. We have more. We're doing, we're doing more Doctor Strange. It's like, oh wow, more Doctor Strange. Sign me up. But it's like, you know, nothing there feels more interesting than like watching something that Marvel hasn't sandblasted all the personality off of in the last yeah. five years. I also uh, really didn't like Infinity War and Endgame. Like personally, I think yeah, that they are two yeah. terrible movies. So even when they were coming out, I'm like, I'm excited to watch them because it's like a big event and going to a movie theater where everyone is excited is fun. But these movies are bad and I don't want to rewatch them. <laughs> like I re yeah, really, I... Oh, really don't dogs. like doing more than maybe looking up a funny scene or two. Like it's just, yeah. it's, they're so bad. They're so poorly constructed. They should have just I, been yeah, one I movie. Guess... <laughs> I guess my attitude towards them is like there's bits in there that are good but there's also the, the movie thinks it has more good bits than it does have you can like tell mm -hmm. because when a scene is supposed to be a big moment you know they'll amp up the background music they'll pull in really close on someone when they deliver a line and it's like and you know it would be easy to place blame but I feel like so much of the problem is like half of these actors didn't even know what they were supposed to be doing in any given scene 
Half of them mm-hmm. hadn't filmed their solo movies yet. Like, I'm amazed Brie Larson pulled off her role as well as she did, considering that, you know, her arc, where she develops a personality, hadn't been written yet. Uh, uh, also, huge flaw of Infinity War, they killed off every single character who was already signed for sequel movies. Like, yeah. oh, gee, I wonder if this has stakes or not. And I know that that's sort of, like, meta movie watching at that point, but if you're that come big on. of a franchise, like, come on, man. Yeah, they killed the wrong people, but they did mm-hmm. that because they wanted to get the original Avengers team back together. They wanted it to be a big yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and it was like... Mm-hmm. That would have been a bigger thing if they had spent any of the previous movies building up any chemistry between the original Avengers and the new guys they had running around. It's but like, every single movie, they had a whole new issue that was pulling the team apart, even though yeah. we had a whole... Pre- uh, I think it's, Marvel yeah. had a really fascinating release mo- movie release strategy because they essentially released movies like they would comic series for a very for like the first phase and a half or so, right? Yep, and it yep. worked for them for those introductory movies. But as soon as they got into, like, the tail end of Phase 2 and Phase 3, the, Why like, are these dogs cumulative not showing burnout. treasure? Uh, apparently wow. the dog, the only other information I've been looking, but the dog is supposed to be white. What? Well. <laughs> One of the sheep is in disguise. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um. Oh, God. Uh. He's but, here uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I think part of the problem I had is like, well, okay, okay. It's, it's like when a long-form story has a romantic subplot in it, and the the thing that I think is driving the story is will they, won't they? Which means whenever mm-hmm. the characters get together, something has to happen. So, oh, oh, there's a misunderstanding, there's a new love interest, There's a, they've just been separated by like actual physical distance. There always has to be some kind of tension in the relationship. It's like they didn't understand that you can get a lot of character dynamics out of letting the characters fucking hang out with each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a thing that I think. Okay, um, y'all, I'm gonna need you to help me find this of... fucking dog. I swear to God, I'm gonna tweak right now. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'll go after right, right, right. I'm a few seconds behind. We're looking for something white without horns. I'm gonna Google where is the dog in Hitano Village. If that, maybe that will help. Good idea. If it's not on this plot of land, I'm gonna kill one of you myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> Because y'all have been letting me run around here like an idiot for ten minutes. <laughs> How is that my fault? <laughs> I'm not on map duty. I'm in the back with a large size Frosty. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry, the radio signal is breaking up. Shh. Is this chat how did you go? Chat says it's by the cow. By the cow. There's so many cows. <laughs> exactly. There are like there are like four cows. Dog might be inside. It's raining. Hmm. Well, well, also, chat says one... you're going the wrong way. Um, yeah, I'm well, one guy also the... said this one may be meat may may specifically want meat. Hmm. Oh. Mm. Mm. Which would be unlucky. <laughs> I'm gonna kill one of those cows in that case. <laughs> I, if I need to get meat for the. Oh, sorry, you don't have your headphones in. Uh... Hey, whatever stays the bloodlust. <laughs> Why are you screaming? Stop screaming. Cleo thinks that it's dinner time, and she's not far Aww. off, but there's an hour and a half until mm. then. Yeah. So, kind if of I, far off. If I take so, out her food, so, do you think she'll come yeah. scream in the mic? Uh, yes. <laughs> Actually, I do. What are you guys making for dinner tonight? Uh, good question. I think question. I'm gonna be getting some sushi. I... Ooh. Hear that? Hear that, And team? it honestly might be delivered, uh... Wait, no, wait, Red, hold on. No. Who's gonna start screaming? <laughs> yes? Hear that? I dropped food on her face! No. <laughs> Heard a whole lot of silence as well. Oh, boo. Yeah, sorry. What, did the mic not pick it up? It apparently did not pick anything oh, no. up. Oh, no. Oh, if only you'd raised your gain. <laughs> Red, I I realize that I tell you to raise your gain a lot, but I'm usually also Wait, correct. Wait, not attack these animals? Mm, no, you can't kill cows. Oh my God. Why you can, can I... just harass them. <laughs> it looks like there's some birds in the lake. Okay, you might be able to take one of those out. No! 
I'm sorry, I just saw you hit the fucking dog with your axe. <laughs> um. <laughs> There's another dog right next to that dog, but he's a brown dog. I've gotten both of these dogs. Are we sure that this dog is supposed to be white? That's yes, according to my cursory percent. Google search, it but says the white Google's dog. The cursory Googles are both saying that. Potato Village dog location. From now on, on OSP streams, we're only playing games that I am world record holder in because this is this is too much for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give each of these dogs a drumstick. Hello, Mr. Dog. Please enjoy this gracious gift that I provided for you. Stop, stop biting your tail, I brought you a drumstick. <laughs> You're definitely looking for a white dog. Where, perchance, might this white dog be hiding? <laughs> I am Have trying. we talked to Impa? <laughs> <laughs> we have talks to Impa. Uh, all right, then. Hmm. Uh, Chad is saying different farm? But I don't know mm. if that's reliable. That's just one person. I am trying to locate... I'm trying to find even a Google image of a white dog in Hitato Village and not having a lot of luck. I, I'm pulling up one of the high-level speedruns for dog percent, so we're <laughs> going to find this dang thing. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank dog. you, Yellow. <laughs> the hero we need. The hero I specifically need. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's like 90% Tarrytown quests. Oh, yeah, it is. Mm. Oh, boy. I'll farm apples in the meantime, so we won't be hurting for it. Did you find the white dog? No, we did not find the white dog. Yeah. We're working on it. it We're working seem on to it. Be here. Maybe it's a ghost dog. Ghost dog. Science says they go inside when it rains, which I was trying to check for earlier, and then chat said I was going the wrong way, so I went back up the hill. I thought they went inside when it rains. So the person saying if you take a picture of a dog, you may be able to track them with the Sheikah Slate. I don't think we've gotten that Sheikah Slate upgrade yet. We have not. I mean, I, we could. We're not far. We get it in Terrytown, but... Oh, you get it in Terrytown. Oh, we get, we village, get it in right? Yeah, sorry. Oh, my foot fell asleep. It's not like squatting in my chair. <laughs> ah, the stress. It's too much for us. Yeah, well, I always sit funky in chairs, which read into oh, that as you me. will, but like, I always, like, I had like a wide, like... Uh, armchair at my desk instead of a desk chair because instead of choosing back support, I've chosen the aesthetic. Um, uh, and I always like fully sit cross legged in it whenever I'm uh, at my computer for a hot minute, and this would qualify as a hot minute. So. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that sheep was a dog. I got really excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I've, oh. I've I've checked through all the all the the sheep, and they are in fact only sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's like on the road up to the lab or something. Let's like, maybe it's next to one of the villagers that, like, sit as you walk up towards the lab. Let's check the road up the to the lab. Person. It'll be up that way. We can, uh, you can give it a shot. I don't know if it's up there, but I feel like I might as well try it. Behind the tree. Let's see. I love these very, like, Mediterranean windmills. It's very cute. That's, that's all my notes. Is there are other kinds like, of windmills? Village. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about windmills. God, imagine dragon's percent is easier than dog percent yeah, by a substantial we margin. <laughs> we were like, dog percent? That sounds so whimsical. I mean, if you compare the amount of progress we've made in this stream to how much progress we made in the beginning of the Dragon Rush uh, series, this is probably more. Uh... Yeah, unfortunately, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> hmm... Can you imagine if we had tried to do this as the first dog when we first went to Hateno oh Village? God. Oh god, the misery. The 
before we even knew multiple dogs was an option. Well, there's no more there's no more farms on the okay, route up no, to the tower. The the, the, the speed run fod is claiming it's this like black and white model dog on the what? sheep farm that we on have been going to. Yeah, okay. and it's just an arbitrary. It just apparently sometimes doesn't work. Huh. Oh, I, I I love I love RNG uh, and an optimized <laughs> speed run. <laughs> How convenient. Uh, well, fantastic. Oh, okay, and then if it works, the oh, vod is right. or the treasure chest is way out behind the tree on the far end. Yeah, unfortunately, they don't spawn until you get the uh -huh. until you give it to the dog. Oh, yeah. cheeky. Mmm. Yeah. Um. Look at it wagging yeah, its that, tail. Yeah, that dog right, that like dog right there is apparently the this right whole time. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so it clearly just isn't working. Is it anything, does it say anything about needing meat, or will it kind of just shove nope, apples? Nope, the speedrunner used yeah, apples. Sure you can use either. All right. Well. Here you go, here you go, little pup. <laughs> Eat these apples, yeah, sake of my sanity. Eat these apples that I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> don't you look, don't you look all Boy. cute. Hey. You. That's just rude in a game where you can't eat the dog. There Is the go. sheep gonna eat the apple? Sheep's it was gonna try to. <laughs> Get out of here! Lead us to your secret treasure, sheep. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Mr. Dog, I fucking need you to eat this fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blow this for us. No, don't follow me. Eat the food. I don't think this is gonna this is gonna work, team. Calm down. This is bananas. I can't uh -huh. believe we are having this much trouble hanging out with a dog. One person should be doing that. You know, that, yeah. there are worse things. No, just think, we're trying to hit seven k. Tactical throw. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The cyan is now at the wheel. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, cyan, uh, we're feeding this dog. Come on, dog. He seems yeah. to be having consumed following us. Caught in our tail. Aww. Aww. This reminds it me of when we were playing, he's a good um, boy. Yeah, well, remember when we were playing uh, Valhalla uh, uh, late last year when we were doing that one hill uh -huh. fort? We were trying to find our yep. way in to, like, Lodensher or whatever the hell it's called, and we couldn't open yep. the door, and then we went down to do the quest out of frustration, and the quest was breaking through the longhouse at yep. the top of the hill fort. And I wanted to throw my it controller exactly at the wall. exactly that. <laughs> this is that, but with a dog. Strong energy. <laughs> All right, we're we're getting we're getting two out of three. We're making great progress. I think that the dog oh. is glitching. I think this dog be tripping. Uh, yep, you can. Oh, I put them away. Oops. Mm-hmm. Mr. Dog. Oh, here he's going. He's on he's it. Going? He's taking a launch. <gasps> I don't think the problem is. Oh, thank God. Oh. oh. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so I pull out works. my nieces and you'll be able to see. <laughs> it works. Follow that dog. It's way the heck behind the tree. Yeah. But we did. We did it. We, we, we got we it. it. Oh my god. Uh, I, I hate to be the person to point this out, and by that I mean I have to be the person to point this out. Uh, we didn't actually get the treasure from the dog um, at no. that last stable we were at, which I believe was the snowfield stable. Yes, because we because ran we out of apples, here to so, get apples. We, so we went back to Hateno because we did yes. not have any more fruit that it would eat. So let's go awesome. do that one now, and then we are done. <laughs> All right. We will revisit this on Wednesday, oh, oh, friends. That. How how much have we gotten uh, in terms of game donations here? We're running uh, uh, six point three k. Wow! Uh, look at us. Our, We're incredible. Uh, yeah, with our pending four k, that puts us over the limit. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just a nice right. forty minute diversion to get that last dog. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll be uh. We'll be streaming again on Wednesday for another charity, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Indigo, that is, uh, that's the one that, that you chose. And we can talk yeah. more about that when we, uh, when we get over there. 
Uh, all oh, right, yeah. which which dog am I giving my my hard earned apples to? The third one. The third one. I don't one, know which right. color it is, but I know that it's the third one. Yeah. Spooky dog. Move quickly because you're you're dying of frost. Yes, indeed. Oh my god, this is such a chore. <laughs> Feed that dog. No. Eat more food. <laughs> Ron. Lead us to the treasure boy. Remind me to never take up speed running. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every time I'm on one of these streams, we do something speedrun related, and at the end of them, Blue is always like, we gotta never speedrun this again. And then yeah. a year later, here we are, speedrunning Breath of the Wild again, but just having <laughs> fun. I can't wait for Breath of the Wild fall off the side of a floating island and die percent. That's gonna really oh be God. something with, uh, with the second oh, game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh beautiful. A oh. useless weapon we will Ew. not use. <laughs> Yay! Alrighty everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, uh, we hope that you uh, had an inversely proportional amount of fun to what I did. And we will catch you all time. on uh, on Wednesday. Say bye everybody. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.